Are you, are you excited, Michael? I am excited. Um, okay. You? Okay, welcome everyone. Um, just give me one second and we'll be starting. I just have to organize one thing. Okay, welcome everyone to the Committee Board 3 SLA Committee meeting for September 16th. Um, I'm going to start off, I'm going to read, we had a couple items that withdrew. Let me make sure. Just double check, can everyone hear me on the Zoom? Is everything connected and working? I want to just drop a note in the chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so we had a few items that have withdrawn this month. Uh, just because they withdrew this month, they may come back again. But if you're here for these items, just watch the calendar. They may show up again in the future. Number three, the river, which was 102 Bayard Street, has withdrawn. Number six, Royal Century Banquet, 100 East Broadway, has withdrawn. Number seven, Waypoint Cafe, 109 Ludlow Street, has withdrawn. So those items will not be heard tonight. They may come back in the future. Okay. Um, so the way, just for everyone here, the way the meeting is going to work, I'm going to give a little brief introduction for each of the items. We will then allow the applicant or their attorney to speak and even respond or add anything that I may have missed. We'll move to public comments or questions. We'll give the applicant the chance to respond. We'll move to committee discussion and move to a vote. So that being said, um, we have a couple, I mean, we're going to, essentially go in order. Um, we have one that is going to be fairly simple, I think, so we're going to move it up. It's going to be number 12, which is Dumbo 302 Broom Street. Um, we heard them in person last month. They had to meet with the residents and make a few changes and come back, so hopefully we won't have to spend as much time on that. It should be fairly quick. Um, so we're going to take that one second. The first one we're going to do is number two, which is Paradise Lost. It's 100 Second Avenue. This one is also a fairly simple item. It's for an alteration. And I'm going to give a summary. So this is Paradise Lost LLC doing business as Paradise Lost is seeking an alteration to the full off-premises liquor license. And the premise is located at 102nd Avenue between East 5th and East 6th Street. This is an application for an establishment with a certificate of occupancy of 74 people. They are reducing the tables from 21 currently to 19. They are reducing the seats from their 54 they were currently approved with to 48 proposed. They currently have one 26-foot bar with 10 seats. They're adding an additional 25-foot bar. 
They are keeping the same method of operation, which is local food prepared in a full kitchen with food served during all hours of operation, no television, ambient background recorded music. Uh, there are 20 full on premises liquor licenses within 500 feet. Um, this location was previously licensed with a full on premises license until 1980. Oh, sorry, from 1987 until October 14th, 2020, when the SLA canceled their license for Haveli Restaurant Incorporated. They actually closed in 2019, so their license was canceled retroactively. Um, Community Board 3 subsequently approved a full liquor license to the current application in December of 2022. They then opened in October of 2023. Um, prior to this business, they currently have at this location, neither of the applicants were license holders. Um, they have been in the hospitality business though, including working at locations in GB3, um, at several different locations, 151 Rivington Street, which is Nightcap, Ray's at 177 Christie Street. Um, there were five 301 complaints at this location since 2023. However, and they may have their responses, but they were all, those five were within the first week of them being open. So I think there just may have been an issue, issue with their openings. Um, um, we received no letters for or against, and I've heard from no members of the public at the moment. There were 84 residents who live within two blocks of location signed a petition in favor of this application. They are not changing anything else with their application, so let their hours will stay 5 p.m. opening and closing by 2 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and 4 a.m. Friday to Saturday. Um, they're not having commercial outdoor space, closing all facade doors and windows at 10, ambient background recorded music only. So the only things they are changing, they are reducing the seats. They are reconfiguring their space to reduce the tables from 21 to 19 and then the seats from 54 to 48 and adding a bar in the back right corner of the business. So are the applicants here? Please raise your hand. I know Frank is their attorney. Two, Good evening. Hi, Frank. There's Covey. And Josh, are both the, the applicants? Okay. Hello, welcome. Um, so you heard my summary. Do you have anything to correct, change, or add to what I just said? Just that the three one, oh. just that the three one complaints were the basis of, as you said, our opening. It took a little bit of tweaking in the first week or so, but we haven't had any issues since then. The neighbors are happy with us. Yeah, there's been nothing. Like I said, they were all within that first like week and a half of you opening. So I figured it was just something working out the bugs, as they said. Okay, um, if you have nothing to add, I, I will move to public to see if anyone from the public is here for questions or comments about this item. Please raise your Zoom hand. Doesn't look like there's anyone. Okay, does anyone, uh, is there anyone here in person that has anything to speak to this item? Okay, any members of the committee have any other questions about this item? Michael? No. Okay. Um, I see. So there's really no questions or comments. It really is a simple alteration. Um, given that, I think we would move to making a resolution to approve this application with the alteration of adding one additional bar in the back right of this establishment and reducing the tables from 21 to 19 and the seats from 54 to 48. Everyone in favor of that? If so, we'll bring up the stipulations quickly just to go through those. Are there really, I don't even know if anything's going to change on the stipulation, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But we'll just go through them because that's what they will be signing and going to the SLA. Oh. Can you bump that just a little bit inside? There we go, that's better. Oops, now it's off the page. You want to um, just uh, the screen back here? Yeah, yeah just uh, is it the participants on yeah. the right? Yes. Yeah, and that should. Let me change the view to. So it is I, Kaveh, and apologies, is it 
Pours and pours and Johnny, pours and Johnny. Yes, sir. Okay. As a qualified representative of Paradise Lost LLC, located at 100 Second Avenue, New York, New York, agrees with the following stipulations: My license will be a full liquor license. Will operate a full service restaurant, specifically a global restaurant with kitchen to open, serving food during the laws of operation. Hours of operation are 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Sunday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. Friday to Saturday. I will not use outdoor space for commercial use. Um, you're not having a storm of security, um, not sound everything was already installed. You'll close any front rear facade doors and windows. You will not have DJs, live music, third party promoted events. Um, that, was, that is a checkup. You're not having cover fees, are you though? No, no cover fees. I think that was maybe a mistake of mine, filling out the stipulation form and schedule performances. You'll play ambient background recorded music only. Will not apply for an alteration without coming to CB3 first, as you just did, as you should. Um, you will not participate in pub crawls or party buses. Will not have unlimited drink specials. Um, you will have a happy hour that went by seven. You will not have a wait line outside. You'll have a staff responsible for ensuring you no know, loitering. You will post this by your liquor license. Residents may contact the manager owner at the number below, and it's Cafe Horan Johnny, and it's 310597. Last one. There we go. Zero one seven six. Okay. If everything is correct, we're going to move to a vote. It looks good to me. What about you, Kabe? Yeah, it looks good. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. So we will move to a vote on the resolution as it was presented and those stipulations that we just read through. Stephen Ballinger? Yes. Guillermo Zabiglia, who's absent. Daniel Tenno? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Michael Lavario? Yes. Okay. Okay, that being said, it was approved. Um, your, well, Frank will be sending this out to you in the next couple of days. Get it notarized and back to us, and you'll be on your way. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. okay. And I also realized that in figuring out all the tech stuff, I did not actually, we did not approve the minutes from last month and take an initial roll call. So we're going to do that now. <laughs> Approval of the minutes from last month. Stephen? Yes. Jan Tano? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Michael Lavari? Yes. yes. And Guillermo Zabiglia is absent. Okay. So the next item we are going to take, as I mentioned earlier, is actually the, the last one. It is number 12, Dumbo at 302 Broom Street. If the applicant is here. Please raise your Zoom hand. And I think the attorney is Frank again. So let's see. There we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, good evening. Hello again. Hello, Frank. And I know just this afternoon we did just get a, a signed agreement. So that's also part of the reason that makes this a lot easier because you have an agreement with the, the neighbors and tenants and actually tenants of the building, not just neighbors. So um I haven't necessarily had a chance to thoroughly look at that because it didn't just come in, but opening it now. So um, I'm just gonna just for procedure, I'm gonna just give the quick summary. Um, I know some of these things have probably changed, but we'll correct those as they go. Mm -hmm. So this is 302 Broom Street LLC doing business as Dumbo, seeking a full on premises license for the premises located at 302 Broom Street between Forsyth and Eldridge. It's an application for an establishment of up to 140 people, two floors containing 90, 29 tables and 131 seats, two bars with 20 and 16 stools respectively, a full kitchen serving food during all of operation, no television with live music, DJs, recorded and background music. There are 16 on-premises licenses within 500 feet. This location previously housed a restaurant, Stone Pizza, also Omar's and Better Days, um, both of which were licensed for full on-premises liquor license. Um, this current applicant has never previously held a license, but has worked in the industry. Um, 34 residents. I don't, did you send in any new petitions, or were these just the petitions from last time? Last month. Okay, because I didn't update them, so I'll just confirm that. So 34 residents who live within two blocks signed a petition in favor of the application, and they're proposing 
Uh, they work for closing hours at 5 p.m., opening 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, closing 2 a.m. Sunday through Wednesday, and 4 a.m. Thursday through Saturday, and opening at 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So, um, they were originally proposing live music and DJs at entertainment level. Um, yeah, so I know, again, I again, didn't really have a chance to look over that agreement, but I will let you make any changes or corrections to what I just said, and I'm gonna look at this agreement while you are doing that. Frank, oh, Frank, do you mean you can't hear? No. I'm, oh. asking, I'm oh. asking Ed a question about the STIP. Okay, uh, let me I just, take... I just heard myself when you it came late this afternoon, so. That's fine. That's fine. Let, me, let me take a look at it right now. This was sent to me by the uh, condo board, the last paragraph. Oh, they're asking for us to basically clear up any violations from the, uh, the pre-existing businesses. I think... Uh, there was a something there's a fine from omar's violation like that or something uh we agreed basically before we open we speak to the landlord and we get all those things rectified or settled um they said there was a partial stop work order there was something on the roof that made it unsafe and there was a and some uh, violations from previous tenants um i told them i'd be happy to speak to the landlord and clear those up uh before we open okay so i'm just for the benefit of everyone here, I'm actually just going to read the agreement. And again, you can then correct. I mean, you did sign it, so I'm assuming you're in agreement, but we can discuss it afterwards. So okay. the agreement tenants of 302 Broom Street commercial unit, or the tenants of 302 Broom Street in agreement with the commercial unit, which is 1A and 1B, they are agreeing to the following. Unit 1A will be used as the dining room only, which is the ground floor level. On Friday and Saturday, live music bands and no more, two, no more than two musicians and only between the hours of 8 p.m. and 10.30 is allowed. There will be no live music and bands played after midnight. There will be no, no DJs in the dining room. And, um, and is it Shahin? Is that how to pronounce yes. your last name? Okay. Yes. Ed, Ed Shahin will, before opening the common area in the basement, is only to be accessed by the residential tenants and owners as they need full access to the water, gas, and electric meters in the basement common area and the elevator machine room in case of emergency. And it's to provide documentation from a certified builder certifying that the common basement area is now closed off to the casual person of his establishment and every owner resident has access to this area 24 7. And Shahin also acknowledges and agrees that all deliveries, including but not limited to the restaurant food delivery, patrons and staff are prohibited from using the residential entry and the residential elevator to the basement and first floor restaurant. The basement level will have a DJ only on Fridays and Saturday nights playing background music up to 4 a.m. An additional door will be installed which will cover the existing door which will be of a five inch thick filled soundproof wool. A certified sound engineer is to provide a report certifying the level of noise is at an agreed upon level for each level of the building. A certified ventilation report is required ensuring the smells of the kitchen are not going into the residential apartments. Any work which is external to units 1A and 1B will require approval of all units in the condo and approved by the authorities before any work is started. Ed Shahin is available. As Ed Shahin operations will not install a vestibule or anything of this nature externally around 302 Broom Street. Documentation will be provided from Ed Shahin with the written agreements and procedures he has for following, but not limited to security team, staff, cleaners, et cetera, and any other risk requests that will be included from the owners or tenants. Agree to get prior approval and have access to the rooftop before approval to access the roof. Condo management must view all documentation to ensure approvals have been obtained from the authorities and meet the consideration of the owners. Water meter, a sub water meter will be installed prior to the commencement of operations at the cost of Ed Shahin. Ed Shahin will ensure the sub water meters are paid timely to the authorities. If no sub water meter is installed, Ed Shahin will pay the condo management 50% of the amount over $3,500 per month. There will be no smoking, no cigars, no hookah, and no weed allowed or used in the premises. Any smoking around the entrances to 1A and 1B will not be allowed, and the management will ensure people go across the road to smoke. The sidewalk will be cleaned on a nightly basis, swiped and mopped, and no rubbish will be left on the sidewalk. There are numerous outstanding violations, partial stop work order, abandoned and unsafe equipment on the roof, 
and money is owed to the tower condo from the previous tenants, these need to be rectified and settled before the businesses commence. Okay, so that's that's the agreement that you sign and agree to with the tenants. Um, yeah. of, so I'll, I will say off the bat that a lot of that stuff, albeit it's an agreement with the tenants, it's some of the stuff that we can't necessarily enforce or the SLA can't necessarily enforce. Your agreement with them may still stand and that's fine and you should honor it, but mm -hmm. it, it's not necessarily some stuff that we can put into our resolutions, but okay. it is it, all of these things I think are things you probably should be doing. So, and yeah, something. I agree. Okay. So that's the agreement that you agree to that in some ways will clear up a lot of things. We do just need to go down through kind of your application and make a few of the changes to reflect what you've agreed to with the residents here. Okay. Oh, uh... It's public, I think. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was, I was skipping ahead. But yeah, we have, I'm sure we probably have a couple people from the public here that would like to speak to this item. Please raise your Zoom hand and we'll promote you to speak. Okay, so first I'm going to go ahead with Jeffrey Hanley. So what? Good, good evening. Hi, Jeff. Um, oh, one, of, one of the questions I had is and yeah, you know, Ed's been very good, and we appreciate he's spent time and discussed with us as the owners um, his uh, his go forwards. But the interesting or one of the challenges I have is there is two parts, if you like, to this building. There is really the the restaurant level, and then there's the basement. And just on sound levels, is it possible to designate? different levels for the different um, space occupations? I think that's, I think they addressed that in the, in the application, or I mean, sorry, in the agreement, I think they had already addressed that. Is that correct, Ed? If I, let me look back at the agreement, but. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? I, I didn't quite actually uh, get that. Can you mine, repeat what you said? Mine or, or the boards? No, yeah, yours, I, yours. Your comment, Jeffrey. Oh, great. Um, it, it strikes me that the restaurant really, mm -hmm. which is the closest to the residents, um, right. ambient level would be more appropriate than entertainment level because that sets different expectation with regard to the to, to the, the sound level. I mean, I understand for the the lower floor, the, the basement, if you like, that you mm -hmm. know, entertainment level, DJ, that's you know, that's more understandable, mm -hmm. but for the restaurant ambient level would seem more appropriate. So for the restaurant, we said from eight to 1030, we'll have entertainment or live bands, nothing entertainment level after 1030 and no music whatsoever after midnight, like no, uh, it would be ambient after 1030 on. Okay. Is that something, um, and, and that's great. And I appreciate that, Ed. And is that something the, the, that can go into the, that's already in the agreement. Yeah, I, I suppose it's translating the agreement we have with you, Ed, into what the board are going to put into their recommendation. Yes. Yeah, so to answer your question, that is something that we do oversee and will go into the final resolution stipulations. Okay, great. And, and, okay. and Ed, you're comfortable that that's designated ambient yeah. rather than entertainment. We can discuss that in this. We'll discuss that in a second too. But after uh, after ten thirty. But yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, so that was, uh, and, and then the second thing, just um, I keep hearing sound, sound check, sound levels. Mm -hmm. Help me understand, is there, a, is there a level that gets set? And maybe the board can help me on this one so that, you know, if you're in, someone's in the residence above um, mm -hmm. is, and someone comes to check it, um, is there a so, is there a decibel level that's set? So is that's that that's what we were saying on the last meeting I had with the building that I'm going to have a sound engineer come check what levels are acceptable so that you know on the second floor or whatever the residents would not be able to hear it, and we can maybe even set a decibel that's appropriate or whatever. But um, I think I emailed saying I'll set a meeting after this, and then if the residents want to attend or tell me what levels are too high, not too high, we would all coordinate and do that. 
Right, and I think Ed, that we talked about as residents, and oh, we can't be there. I'm not in in New York at this stage, but doing a okay. walkthrough with you. Just so yes, you yeah. Start. I invited uh, I invited whoever can come to come, and that way we, you know, we set an appropriate level. Yeah, because that probably touches on the second point, which is the access. Which I think there's a plan that's been sent because historically there was adjustments made to the entry which is what caused the issue around security and access by patrons to the to the residential units and I, and, and my understanding is that and and this is for a security purposes right um you'll be looking to reinstate that original uh, i'm sorry layout. say that one more time reinstate what there's originally there was three you know, i mean we had this discussion the other day three door accesses there's now uh there's now the original plan i believe caitlin has shared it which shows the three. Yeah, she, so, so she said, yes, there's two doors, one for the restaurant, one for the, the lounge area, the downstairs, and then one for the residents. I agreed not to use the uh, resident, residential entrance whatsoever uh, for deliveries. Is my guess nothing. I would not be using the uh, third entrance. Okay. No. I think we're on the same page. I'm, I haven't walked through it myself. So, you know, it's, it's, I, um, I have not either. That's, that's, the yeah. I haven't, so we're, uh, we're, uh, yeah. yeah so. <laughs> commitment to it all right um, but yeah i've, I've from, agreed to that since the yeah, last one so yeah i think we're on the same page and then obviously ventilation i don't think is this ventilation something the board covers sorry for, for so I... the ventilation they said was messed up from stone pizza it looks like somebody yeah. cut the hood off or something like that i agreed to fix it because to cook to have food i'm gonna have to fix that anyway um, so before I open, the ventilation issue will be fixed. Right. And sorry, just a question for the community board: Is ventilation within your purview? Um, it's not for the SLA. It's not really for for us from the SLA. We sometimes have mentioned it if it's when it's been a problem and it's causing disturbances. It's rattling. It's shaking the roof and building we have we can address it in that way but the rest of it is more of a health department building health department and building department i think right well there is a little as you probably know from the last meeting there was a little bit of or oh, there was a, a lot of concern from the top floor tenant because of the uh, illegal I, installation of the hood which I, and ed i know you've made commitment to rectify the yeah i I just want to say, um, yeah, I spoke to my contractor. It, it's the law. We can't cook that way. Like it needs yeah. to be properly ventilated. So it will be fixed before we open. That's not something I can uh, bypass regardless of SLA. It's even if there was no liquor license, it, the way the smoke is going up into the building now, it's, it's totally illegal. So it has to be fixed regardless. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can't appreciate that. Yeah. Sorry. That's, yeah. that's probably enough questions for me is I'll, I'll, um, yep. Uh, okay. No, no worries. If you have any other concerns, you're, uh, you know, just let me know. Okay, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, next, I see Odine Steamers. Okay. Yeah. Hi, hi. I've got slightly bad internet here, so I apologize if I go in and out. Um, first of all, I'd like okay. to thank Ed for being really communicative, and we'd be able to get together on a good conversation this week. Um, Thank you. Oh, sorry, last week. And I do think we will make a time where people can come around and walk through the place and what you're planning to do. And I really do thank him for, for that. And with that shows, you know, trust and honesty that he's going to respect the residents and that. So thank you. My, it's probably my biggest concern, and I'm going to come back, is the security. Um, security from the basement with the original uh, floor plan of that area was for a store, not for um, being any form of um, mm -hmm. entertainment. And so therefore the base, the elevator is on the basement floor and it does concern me how we're going to stop people, patients coming up to the residence area. So that is one concern there. Mm -hmm. And the, the second concern is the doors, there were three doors in the front of the building, one of those mm -hmm. doors have now been taken out or blocked off. I'm not too sure what has happened, but that door we need to have be put back because we need to be able to get to the meters. 
and we haven't shouldn't have to go through your building to get to the meters your your entrance right um okay well thank you i know uh odin you've been like the nicest person uh i still have not walked the space like i said uh last week but as far as the three doors i'll make sure there's three doors because i think one has to be for the restaurant one has to be for the residential and one has to be for the downstairs uh as far as the issue about the access to the elevator or the common area i already agreed to either wall it off have my contractor build something or at all times have a security guard there i definitely don't want my my guests or patrons kind of wandering into the common area or you know disturbing the building or guests or anything like that so you know i've already agreed to that and uh, when i do do the walk walk through i'm looking forward to meeting you and we'll you know i i'll make sure there's three entrances and i'll make sure nobody gets to the uh messes with the elevator or gets into the common area or anything like that but thank you yeah. Okay, and I'm going to have to trust you because I most probably won't get to New York on time because I'm not okay. planning well, to I, be there in the next few months. I, I still haven't even set the walkthrough, so I, I'll send an email if you guys want to tell me what day is good. It doesn't have to be next week; it could be the following, whatever. I'm going to be there more than once. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. You know, so yeah, yeah, we'll figure it. Out. I mean, I'll talk to the other residents, and as you know, one of the active residents, so I'll talk to other residents, and we can make a time that will suit people. Yeah. Yeah, let me know what, what works we'll for everyone, this. and then we can kind of do everything at once. I'll check out the hood. I'll go to the roof. I'll do the uh, the decibel test, the sound test. I'll do the uh, the doors. We'll kind of knock everything out. So it would be easier for me if I could schedule my contractor and uh, my sound engineer and just kind of knock everything out once. So just let me know when it works for all the residents, and I'll, uh, I'll be there. And thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get communicating with them. Yeah, yep. thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, anyone else here from the public that wishes to speak to this item? Please raise your hand or we will move on. Okay, so, okay, so Ed, um, so I'm gonna go through, I think just your previous, I guess I'm gonna just kind of quickly go through the questionnaire and then we'll okay. kind of Resolution and because some of the things that we're gonna, I have some questions on the questionnaire based on the agreement you've just made. Okay. So I think based on the agreement, I think they were in agreement with your hours, with the hours you were proposing originally, correct? Yes, I think we're in agreement, yeah. Which were 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. Friday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. on Saturday, and 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. on Sunday. That's what you had in your questionnaire. Did you want, I think you wanted 12, you wanted earlier on Saturday, correct, or not? I did. It's not, it's not a deal breaker. It's not a major thing. If I could have earlier, that would be great, but it's not. They, a... would, they, wouldn't, sure. they wouldn't object to that, Ed. Well, huh? here, yeah, you can, you, we would, we welcome you to open earlier to have daytime activity. Okay. What I will say, though, is I just want to caveat that by saying, if you say you're going to open at 12, then you need to be open at 12. So if you're not sure if you're going to have the earlier hours, if you open it, if you say your hours are 5 p.m. to midnight, or I'm sorry, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., you can open earlier than 5 p.m. You just have, you have to be open by 5. So if you say 12 noon, you have to be up by 12 noon. So I guess, I guess for now we'll say 5, and then the plan is to eventually open earlier. Yeah, because our, our, the way our language is, it's opening no later than. So you can open, open at noon on Saturdays and Sundays. That's fine. But So you want to leave it at 5, 5 all days? Yes, we'll leave it as is. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And then the closing hours, like I said, were 2 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and 4 a.m. Friday and Saturday. Uh, yeah. I didn't think that was... Was it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 4 a.m.? No, just, just Friday and Saturday. Till we got on Saturday. So, yeah, I didn't think that was changed. Um, okay, so that was the hours. So back to the Okay, so you're still proposing 
two bars on the first floor and one on the in the basement floor, correct? Yes. That hasn't changed. So you're so nothing, I mean, I know you're talking about other doors and blocking, but as far as your configuration of your space, that hasn't changed. No, front. no, the layout, the, the floor plans and layout has not changed. Uh, they were just as basically discussing like operational things. Um, yeah, where right. she, the elevator, stairways, et cetera. Right, so, yes. okay, so that, so the general layout hasn't changed. Um, mm -hmm. Now, as far as the music, mm -hmm. I know you said on the main floor, which I think 1A is the ground floor, 1B is the basement, the cellar, level, correct? Yes, yes, correct, yeah. So 1A is proposed to be the dining room and it was going to be live music between 10, 8 and 10.30? Right, yeah. And the idea is no no loud music or not, nothing really, not even like background music beyond midnight, but entertainment will entertainment will be like from 8 to 10.30, just while people are having dinner, watch a show, watch a live band, something like that. And that is, and that is an entertainment level or is that a background level? I think that's background level. That's not, I mean, it's, it's not anything crazy. Uh, I think that was something you mentioned earlier. You mentioned it would be at entertainment level and for a dining room entertainment level is more like concert. Yes. Yeah. I think I, I just meant like, uh, I misunderstood, but yes, uh, it's not going to be entertainment level. It's going to be background between eight and 10 30, but the live music would still be at background level. Is that? Yes. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And then in the basement is going to be DJs. Are you planning live music in the basement as well? Probably not. No. Okay. So the basement is just DJs. So the live music is, and is it going to be acoustic live music upstairs then? Uh, it could be, depends who we book on a, uh, you know, it could be, it just depends. Really. But even, It'll be like... even if it's amplified acoustic, it's still going to be a background level then, correct? Yes, it's always going to be background level. Okay. So then basement level will be DJs. Mm -hmm. And then is, I think, I, without flipping back to the agreement, was DJs, was there any limits on the time frame of the DJs or the music in the basement level? Uh, no, there wouldn't be. We're going right. to, the only thing was we're going to serve food till an hour up to close. And this is going to be a nice, uh, like loungy feel, but it there's there's no time limit on that. Okay. Um, so back to that. So our general, what we require is some food service during all its operation. Okay. Yeah, we were planning on doing last call at three in the morning because the okay. hours are four. So that doesn't mean if someone orders something at five till that you have to serve them, but it's basically while people are there, there should be some food available for them to eat. But again, it doesn't have to be at five till four. Mm -hmm. You can't is, cut the is, Would five to three be acceptable for that or no? No, oh, I, meant, I meant like 355. If someone comes in at 355. Oh, 355. Okay, that's that's fine. I'll talk yeah, to myself. That's fine. I can extend that. That's not a big deal. Up to the last minute, but you have to have food available during your hours. Operation. During those hours. That's that's fine. That's, that's, okay. a, that's our standard language that we normally use. Okay. Another question about going back to the music and the sound. You mentioned you were going to have a sound engineer come in. Mm -hmm. Our standard language is that sound, is, the music and sound is not audible in the adjacent apartments. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Our general language that we use for the soundproofing and noise is that sound, a sound engineer will be used to ensure that sound is not audible in the neighboring apartments. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, I don't want to be like a disturbance to the neighbors. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, you know, they shouldn't be laying in their bed hearing your music, even if it's, and the difference is, mm -hmm. some sound engineers are going to tell you that the minimum sound is 80 decibels. Okay. The difference, 80, and that is city code, but 80 decibels is still conversation level. So if you're laying in bed and you're hearing music that loud, it's, it's a disturbance. So our standard is to ensure sound is not audible in neighboring apartments. Do you agree to that? Yeah, I agree to that. I was initially just going to do, I was going to invite the residents to actually tell me this is okay, this is not okay, and, you know, okay. kind of set what level. No, that's good. To have the residents there, especially the residents directly above, and then yeah. when you have an engineer, they can do tests. 
and mm -hmm. likely the sound engineer is going to set a limiter and everything else so that the music can't be raised above a level where it's going to disturb them, whether it's by bass from the vibrations or from just the noise itself. Okay, yeah, it's totally reasonable. Okay, that's that's good. Um, and I think there was one other thing I had a question about. So on your original application, you had no more than six to eight private parties per month. Now a private party, what we consider is a full buyout of the entire space of a closed down. Is, is that you're planning six to eight part, private parties per month? Is that? Uh, no, I just didn't know how many would come in. So I just wanted to say that was a rough number. Maybe six to eight might be a little less actually. Um, I, I'm not too sure, it really depends. Like for example, holiday season, you do more, uh, I don't know. It might be like three to four, it might be six to eight. So I'd some, say that's a, that's a good average, six to eight. So here's, so I mean, you put per month, um, if, if it's easier, because we do have applicants do this often, is they'll list a number per year. That way you're not locking yourself into this if you have more over the holidays. Okay. It's a little flexible that way. So, you know. I, I think six to eight is a good number. I think that's that's accurate. Six to eight per month. Okay. And that's an entire buyout of both floors. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how many security are you proposing then? I was originally saying two, but then after speaking to the residents, we're going to do more to start. Um, the way I see it, it's going to be a learning curve if we need more security to usher people away. You know, smoking in front of the building, but, you know, the later hours have people disperse. So the noise isn't disturbing them. I might start with three, go down to two. Um, we don't really know yet. You know, we'll see how busy we are when we actually open. But I'm thinking in the range of two to three. Okay. And you're not, it's a closed fixed facade, right? You're not making any changes to the front. You're not having operable windows, are you? No, I agree to no, uh, no changes to the front. Okay, so I think, I think those were all the main points that I had questions about of correcting to see if anything had changed from your application. Um, I see one other person has now raised their hand. We're going to take this quickly, Julie, and we're going to promote you. Um, if you have a question or if you have something to add to this, please go quickly because we're ready to move on. Um, you said Julie? Julian had raised their hand. Julian Lopez, but I think Julian put it, their hand down. So, Jeff? Yeah, okay. specific. Yeah. Well, there was Julian Lopez I saw was down there, but she took it down, so don't worry about that. Um, go with, okay, Je Jeff, we're gonna promote you quickly. Uh, two minutes. No, we're gonna do less than two minutes because we're ready to move on. We had already asked for public comment. I will let you speak quickly, but we're not giving you two minutes. Hi, I'm Jeff Lawrence. I'm a neighbor um, on the block, two, two buildings over. This is 302 Broom, correct? Correct, it is, yes. I'm sorry, I, I, I came in late from work, I apologize, and I won't be too long. And this is not at all a reflection on Ed, or I, I didn't vet Ed, or the business coming in. I just want to say, um, we have a restaurant that opened across the street that's supposed to be a restaurant. They're operating as a nightclub. They told us there'd be bagels and juice and this, and the room that was supposed to be in has TV sets in the window that says, nightclub open Saturday night. They are operating as a nightclub. The last time we had two nightclubs on this block, we had Louie and Chan on one side, for those of you that remember, and Happy Ending on the other. This is the largest amount of 311 calls ever dialed into the city. Hundreds and hundreds. Happy Endings was an abomination. I have videotapes of knife fights and drug deals that I submitted to the board before they were finally out. Then a new incarnation of Happy Endings came out, I remember, and then it was Happy something. But when you have two nightclubs facing each other, 
on a narrow street like this and people coming out at three in the morning, three or four in the morning, it's going to be hell. There is no traffic on this street. It is blockaded by uh, the Allen Meridian and it is blockaded by Sarah Roosevelt Park. There are no Ubers that can get through. I've seen it. It's, it's unmitigated hell. Hundreds of people on this small block with two nightclubs operating uh, opposite each other. And I'm vehemently against this. And again, this early terrible that opened supposed to be a restaurant. They're operating as a nightclub. It's, it's ropes. They have outdoor seating at two in the morning. I thought outdoor seating's over at midnight. They are using, they are extended across the street. They're seating half a block down. They have 50 seats of people sitting outdoors at two in the morning. And now you open another nightclub across the street. I've seen this before. It's absolute hell. Please don't do this to us. Have you filed through one complaints or contacted the community board office about the place across the street? We're working on that. Okay, because that's... Happened? Yes, yes, I do have three one complaints that the police took action to respond and fix the problem. Yes, that is a record, but I am working with my neighbors. We need, we haven't formed in many years because we haven't needed to. It's been quiet since COVID, but we're going to need to be active again. And, and if this is another nightclub, it's going to be hell. Um, so what I would suggest too, if you know, if whatever happens if this ends up getting improved, is that um, you're going to have Ed's number. He seems to be willing to work with the residents and neighbors, so you could be something you can reach out directly to him as well. Okay, I look forward to doing that. And again, this is not a reflection on Ed or the people coming in or the early terrible that seem like nice people. It just seems that people open these restaurants slash bar music clubs and they just start operating as a nightclub every single time been there done that's been going on for 20 years and i think everyone on the board knows what i'm talking about so i i will absolutely introduce myself and and hopefully we can keep things in check but i do want you to know on basic principle and i can speak for my neighbors that are not here we we just can't have two nightclubs opposite each other on a tiny block like this yeah we completely hear that and understand that so, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I think that was the only new person. I did see, I don't know, is there someone else? Did I see another hand up or was it just? Okay. Okay. So I think I've had all my questions answered, or I've asked all my questions. Does anyone else have on the committee have any questions? Um, so they're in agreement with the, uh, the upstairs neighbors. The, the building. Hours. Yes. Okay. The tenants have agreed with them. Four um, them downstairs. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the tenants have agreed. Um, and they're, again, these were hours of, there was an, a previous place, I mean, not counting Stone Pizza because that's nothing is legal about that, but the previous place, Omar's, you know, had similar hours and license, full license yes. and everything else. Yes. So it's yes. not. So this is replacing, essentially, Omar. replacing Omar's, replacing an existing establishment with similar hours and seems to be possibly a better method of operation. Got it. Okay. Um, is everyone in agreement then kind of with what we've just kind of gone through? I will go through a organized set of stipulations, but does anyone have any? I think if the upstairs neighbors, yeah. they're the most impacted. I mean, they're the impacted yeah. ones and that's generally what we'll and again, we're not adding another license. It's an existing establishment, so we're, you know, already, it's not an unlicensed location. I'm concerned about the access to the, because I've run into that same thing in your building. building. But if they say that they'll put up a wall and leave the third they're door, adding their access, third access, that's good. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put up a stipulation form, which will. Mm -hmm reflect what we've just gone through with you. Uh, okay. Can you see? Can in. you just zoom in just a tiny bit more? Okay. So it's and so I'm assuming Ed is it Sol Ak Shahin? Is that well that's that's actually misspelled. It's S A L A H. I think that's a typo. Okay, so it's A H not A K. Well, it's one name. It's S A L A H. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a that's a typo. Okay. S O. You said S O H. Yeah, S A L A H. 
that's Sal. Uh, that's my father. That's my dad. Right. Okay. Yeah. And representative 302 Broom Street LLC. Right. Like, will be a full liquor license. We'll operate a full service restaurant, specifically American comfort food, with kitchen open and serving food during all of operation. Hours of operation will be Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., Friday and Saturday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m., Sunday, 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, I will not use outdoor space for commercial use. And then I will employ a doorman security. Are you, you said, uh, we don't, <clears throat> so is it, we don't want to lock you into having too many, but you were saying you're going to start with, do you want, is it reasonable to say two per night? Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, and and and, and additional if needed or something like that. Is that yes? Yeah, and more if needed. Yeah. Okay. And then I will install soundproofing to supplement the existing soundproofing. Um, sound from basement and restaurant will be in audible to building residents. Um, you'll have a closed. Actually, that needs to be changed because it is a closed facade. So it's not closing. You will you will have a closed fixed facade. There's no opening window. So yes. Yeah. And then so you will have DJs, live music, third party promoted events, but you won't. Or sorry, you will have DJs and live music, but you won't have third party promoted events or any event in which a cover fee is charged or scheduled performances for more than six to eight private parties per month. We do need to put in there the language about. Um, live music will be at background level. Okay, so maybe on on level one A, live music will be background level between eight and ten thirty p.m. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. And then ambient recorded music all other times. Yeah. On level one A, mm -hmm. live music will be between. 8 and 10 30 p.m. p.m. Mm -hmm. Ambient recorded background music all other times. Mm -hmm. And then DJs at entertainment level in the basement. Yep, thank you. The only thing, and I just I'm just looking quickly at your agreement. Didn't you say was and I was a little confused in their language. Was the live music only intended on the the main floor? Is that only intended to be Friday and Saturday night? For uh, for now, it might be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but um, I'm not sure yet. Okay, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, live music bands of no more than two musicians between the hours of eight to ten thirty. That was in your agreement with the residents. Yeah. So what yeah, that, I don't think I'm going to do bands every single day. That's, that's just excessive. But um, it, it would be just weekends to start, yes. Okay, so that's that was your agreement, so we'll leave that in there. Um, okay, so that takes care of the music section. Mm -hmm. So the next item, it's not going to be recorded background music because you will have live music upstairs and you will have DJs at entertainment level in the basement. Right. You will not apply for any alterations to the method without coming in for CB3. You will not seek a change in class. It's already full liquor, so it doesn't matter. It will not participate in pub calls or party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. You will not have a happy hour. You will have. You will not have weight lines outside, and you will have a staff person to ensure there's no loitering noise or crowds. Yeah. You, you will conspicuously post a stipulation by your liquor license, and resident may contact the owner manager at the number below. And. It's well correct the name, it's S A L A H. Shaheen. Yep. And then the number is 646 427 4420. Can you read this one? All right. And then I will buy for 10. And then it says, I will buy, abide by the terms of the agreement with building residents signed and dated September 13th. And we'll seek approval from building residents before applying for alterations to the license terms. Yep. Thank you. Let's cry. Okay. Anyone, everyone on the committee, we're all in agreement? Okay. Um, so if everything is good, we're gonna go ahead and move to a vote. Stephen Ballinger? Yes. Daniel Tannell? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Michael Lavario? Yes, yes. 
Okay, so the stipulation will be sent out to Frank, to your attorney, and you'll get them signed and notarized and back to us by the date required. Okay, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your time, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. Right. Oh, no, I skipped. A little, like, nope. Okay. So, moving on, I think we're just going to kind of essentially, all the rest, I don't see that any are any easier than the rest, so I think we're just going to move forward. Go to number four, which is 50 HST Hospitality LLC, which is 50 Bowery. Are the applicants here? Is everyone here in person for 50 Bowery? Okay, then everyone. If you're online, please raise your hand for 50 Bowery. I see Joseph Levy. What? This, this is for 50 Bowery, yes. We're going to do 50 Bowery now. Are you here for 50 Bowery? Yeah. yeah. Did you fill out a speaker form? No, I just okay. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were just out there waiting to be heard, to hear for it. So, hey, okay. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Joseph. Okay, great. I've got the whole team here with me. Okay, great. So uh, you know how you know the drill. I'm going to give a brief summary as soon as I get your get the description up. Okay. So 50 HST Hospitality doing business. It's a to be determined to seek new full on-premises license for the premises located at 50 Bowery between Canal and Bayard Street. This is an application for establishment with up to 120 people, 15 tables and 73 seats, including a stand-up bar with eight seats, full kitchen serving food during all its operation, no televisions, live music and DJs at entertainment level, streaming music for background music. There are six on-premises licenses within 500 feet. Um, this location is in the basement of the 50 Hotel Bowery. Um, the applicant has never had a license but and has never operated a business in the district, but has some background experience. I guess we can let the applicant give us a little more about that. 39 residents who live within two blocks of location signed a petition in favor of the application. Um, they're proposing hours of 4 p.m., I'm sorry, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. all days. No commercial use of outdoor space, a closed fixed facade. Um, they are proposing live music and DJs, but no third party promoted events or scheduled performances. And the one other pending thing, I think, which was not complete application, are you planning on having happy hours? No happy hours. Okay, no happy hours. I think I don't think that was checked off on the application. So, okay. Um, so that's the general brief summary. If you want to go ahead and, yeah, add, you know, elaborate on anything that I said or missed. Thanks for that, Clint. I'm going to introduce my clients in a second to uh, introduce themselves, talk to you a little bit about the concept and their experience. Just a couple notes on the application I wanted to make up top, if I could. Uh, 50 Bowery Hotel is currently licensed with the 4 a.m. liquor license and has been for many years. The current space that these gentlemen will be occupying in the basement is currently licensed with the exact method of operation that we're seeking here. Uh, in addition to the notice we sent to the board office to be on this agenda for this new license application, we also filed an alteration notice to essentially remove this area from the existing hotel liquor license application to make room for us to file this application. So the net net here is about zero because we are basically installing something which method of operation has already been approved and has been in practice here for many years. So I just want to make that quick note um, and that alteration I believe has been administratively approved by the board and uh, is currently being filed with the state liquor authority to clear the way here. So now that I've said that, I'd like to introduce uh, one of the principals to give you a little background on himself and what he's planning for the space. Thank you, Joseph. My name is Gregory Stamato. This is my partner, Isaiah Trusty. Uh, my partner, Isaiah, has over 20 years marketing some of New York's most popular venues. 
I myself have over 10 years in the hospitality industry, operating venues like Provocateur and Socialista. Uh, I'm a resident of CB3 and myself live on the Bowery. Uh, we are excited to add an upscale cocktail lounge and nightlife component to the 50 Bowery Hotel. And we, we hope to bring some positive energy to the neighborhood. We're here for any questions that you guys might have. Okay. Uh, well, first, we're going to move to the public. I know we do have someone here in person. Um, Mitchell, if you want to go ahead and speak, if you could just use one of the microphones so that we can all be heard. There. Oh, okay. Just uh, speaking. Thanks. I'm Mitchell Gruber. I am um, the representative of the Bowery Block Association to CB3. I live on the Bowery. I live at 20 Confucius Plaza, which is across the street from 50 Bowery. I'm also on the um, Landmarks Committee of CB3, and just we just ended our meeting. Okay. Thank you for um, I'm concerned about the fact that I've had a number of problems with 50 Bowery, especially the rooftop, which is called the Crown. And Susan knows about their history. There is a stipulation that there should be no outside DJ and no outside music on the roof. Last night, I had to register a complaint with 311 because I saw with my own eyes an outside DJ playing disco music. Now, to get to the basement venue, it's one single door right on the sidewalk. So I'm concerned about crowds. I'm concerned about lines. And this is a very busy part of the Bowery sidewalk because you have an arcade on the street level. You have the entrance to the crown, which is the rooftop venue. And you have the guests of the hotel coming in. In addition to that, it's a very narrow sidewalk at that particular point because there's a bus shelter built on that sidewalk. So all of the pedestrian traffic narrows down right at that section. And um, I'm concerned about a 4 a.m. closing time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Okay, is there anyone here from the public on Zoom that would like to comment on this item? Please raise your Zoom hand if there if you are. Okay. Oh, oh uh, I saw something flash, but yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, hi Michelle. We're gonna we promoted you. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, hi. Um, also, I'm I'm chiming in with Mitchell on the same uh, with the same concerns, and uh, for the Bowery Alliance of Neighbors as well. Now, the as you I think are well aware, the Bowery is a very heavily trafficked area, vehicular traffic of all kinds emergency service vehicles, trucks, cars, and there's a bridge right there. This is an insanely busy corner. And as well as that, there are uh, always pedestrians, a lot of pedestrians. This is a very bad idea for a venue, which is going to be open till, excuse me, 4 a.m., and having um, one door, is there an egress door as well, or just coming in and then what does everybody do? I don't know. It seems very, um, it seems very tentative to me in terms of, uh, in terms of the community and also in terms of the participants there. And this is going to be music at entertainment level. You know, if you have music that is called background music at this point, it is entertainment level music already. I have yet to hear background music, which is actually, you know, background music. 
So at entertainment level, this means ear splitting in a small enclosed space that's going to empty out onto the Bowery where it's very busy at all times. You'll have a lot of people coming in via vehicles and where are they going to go? They're all going to get clogged together. This is, um, to me, this is, and to the Bowery Lines of Neighbors and to the Bowery Block Association, not uh, not a positive uh, venue for the area, especially for this area, especially as well as um, considering the other venues on the top of the building, which have come under, oh, I don't know, uh, various 311 complaints over the years. So if there's all together with this very uh, one hotel, it doesn't bode well in my mind for being something that is going to be a positive asset to this community. I don't know what are they, what are they providing that is a, considered an asset to this community. Thank you, Michelle. Sorry. Susan, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. Isn't this replacing another venue at the same hours? And same it time? is. There's already nothing's really being added. They're not adding another license and they're not adding, they're not changing the hours. They're really not, they're not changing. People. They're not adding people. They're not the, the previous venue had the same entertainment level music. So in a sense, nothing is really changing with this application. Okay, just, it's, I was confused. it's just separating it from it's no longer under the hotel, it's its own separate license as opposed to being under the hotel license. Got it, thank you, I was confused. Okay, anyone else from the public here? If not, we're going to move on. Okay. Um, uh, Joseph or any of the applicants, did you have any, did you wanna to respond to anything that you heard? Yeah, just, just very quickly, Clint. Um, we have absolutely no part of our operation is going to be outside. We are not involved with the roof. This is a self-contained subterranean space that we're looking to take over. No outdoor space whatsoever. As far as lines and traffic outside, we're not interested uh, in adding to that. We're going to have security. We're going to employ a reservation system, perhaps a number of reservation systems to ensure that we are as least impactful in this community as possible. We're working with the hotel tied into their security team. We'll keep cars moving outside. We'll keep people, if there's any queuing at all, it'll happen inside. But the hope is that there'll be none because it'll be on a reservation system. And as you had mentioned, and Susan had mentioned, um, this really is like a net zero situation. It's just a restructuring, but everything we're asking for is everything that has existed for, I think about seven or eight years or so. Okay, thank you for that. Anyone on the committee have any questions or comments? I had one question for yeah. the applicant. Um, on the questionnaire, it said no promoted or scheduled, but may have cover fee. So would that just be an entrance fee on a like a weekend night, but not for a specific event? That that's correct. They're not using third party promoters. They're not having these scheduled performances or anything like that. It just may make sense to have a cover fee on occasion. And uh, you can commit to keeping the sidewalk clear at all times, day and night. Uh, you guys are going to be open until four. So definitely, you know, that's really important to keep the sidewalks clear for 5 a.m., for 4.30. Um, but you can commit to having no wait lines and keeping that under control. Yes, absolutely. Happy to. Um, what's so? What are the um, the experience exactly from the potential operators here? I know I heard. Oh yeah, that's operators. one thing I, they it was mentioned, and I think they were gonna. I would ask if they could elaborate. Could you give us a little bit more information about your history and your experience? Sure. You guys want to talk more about your your background and experience? I think in in uh, Greg's intro, he mentioned that 
He's been 10 years operating spaces within New York City, he gave a couple spaces, um, and his partner's been operating for close to 20 years uh, on the operations and marketing sides, but they can give you more specific details if that's what you're looking for. Yes. So currently I'm the general manager of Socialista. That is at 376 West Broadway in Soho. Um, prior to that, I worked at Provocateur. Provocateur was at the Gansvort Hotel. So I have a lot of experience within operating in a hotel environment. What was your job at Provoc? Provocateur, I was an assistant manager uh, and worked for the owners directly. Um, as for Isaiah, Isaiah worked at Finelli's. He helped open Little Sister open prior venue is within emm group got it and we're, we're talking about little sister the tau venue right correct so that's got another it. venue that's operating within a hotel where you know a queue outside is not in the best interest so they that is something that he has worked alongside with them in limiting and working on a reservation basis only it was um Isaiah, what was your most recent job? Uh, town group with Little Sister. Yes. Little Sister. And what was your job there exactly? Um, head of promotions. Head of promotions. Did I hear that correctly? The head of promotions? Yes. Creative director and head of promotions. For Little Sister. And that's the current job that you're in? Yes. And uh, Greg, are you an applicant or a principal uh, or, or, or an employee? Who? Me. Greg. Greg. Greg's a principal. These are both. All right. I just don't see right here. on the application here. I only see Isaiah's. Correct, because um, it just asks for one, but Greg is as well. You'll see his name will be on the application as well as a, as a licensed principal. Correct. Okay. Anything else? Um, uh, yeah, so does anyone have any objections to what they presented or anything that we've kind of read through the resolution? Okay, um, so, you know, my feelings, my feelings are that essentially, I think, as you mentioned in the beginning, Joseph, that it is, it is a, a net zero change to the area really because it's essentially exactly the same thing that's there. Um, I know there's been other problems with the hotel and some of the other venues, but you know that doesn't affect or isn't doesn't have anything to do with this venue, especially now being separated from the hotel. I think you just need to be very cognizant of the fact that there have been other problems with the hotel. You don't want to add to those or create any new ones. And specifically, because you are, I don't think you have to worry about the DJs from the rooftop bothering the neighbors because you're downstairs, but just your primary focus should be just kind of keeping it all contained in the downstairs area. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Clint. You're absolutely right. We're acutely aware of that. We're already having meetings with the hotel personnel and some of the op other operators inside because, you know, we would like to get in there and maybe help the whole building operate better. But we're, we're obviously most concerned with our space and we feel like we can contain it pretty well. Um, I would like to add that, you know, some of the venues that you've mentioned um, as experience, um, you know, they're more nightclubs rather than cocktail bars, um, you know, which I think I could support here. However, the way they do their lines is there's no, or uh, people queuing up to come inside, there's no organization to it. Um, it's just a door person and they pick and choose out of a um, very unorganized crowd up front, which I think you guys should be very careful about. Yeah, I think 90 plus percent of the people coming into our space are going to do th so through an advanced reservation system to avoid that problem entirely. We're very aware of it. We're not looking to create a scene in front of the hotel. Got it. Okay. Um, so if everyone's kind of agreeing with the resolution, but as we've roughly stated here, we can pull up the stipulation form. Now, Joseph, this isn't technically a, it's not a sale of assets, is it though? Correct. It's not going to be a sale of assets. 
Okay, I didn't, yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of loosely read through this. It's I, Isaiah Trusty, it's a qualified member of 50 HST Hospitality LLC, located at 50 Bowery, will be a full liquor license and will operate a bar tavern with less than a full service kitchen, open and serving food during all hours of operation. The hours of operation will be 5 p.m. to 4 a.m. all days. Um, and there were, I think, a few things maybe that you had, but you're not planning on using any outdoor space for commercial use, correct? Correct. Okay, so we're gonna check that off. And then you will employ a doorman or security personnel, eight security personnel on every on site every night. Um, it's I assume it's already soundproofed. You don't need to install additional soundproofing. Correct. It has a closed fixed facade. So you will have DJs and live music. You will not have third party promoted events. Correct. You will have events with a cover fee is charged, but you will not have scheduled performances. Correct. <laughs> Um, so you will, so you will be playing entertainment level. So it's not only recorded ambient background music. You won't apply for any alteration without coming for CB3. Um, you will not participate in pub crawls or party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including bluesy brunches with food. You will not have a happy hour. You will not have wait lines. You will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering, noise, or crowds. You will post a stipulation beside your liquor license, and residents may contact the manager or owner at the number below. Is Isaiah Trusty and it is 215-796-1695. But was that that was everything we agreed to? Is that I didn't I didn't hear what you said. Oh yeah, I said that's it. Yep. That's it. Okay, nice. Okay. Um, if there's no changes and no one from the committee has any questions, we'll move to a vote. Stephen Ballinger? Yes. Daniel Tano? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Michael Lavar. Yes. Okay. So that motion is passed. So you'll be getting stipulations mailed out to you within the next day, in the next day or so, and with instructions to get those back to the office. Great. Thanks, Glenn. Thank you. Okay. On to, we're moving on to number five, which was PHX 88 Incorporated at 85 Bowery. You are the applicants. Okay, I see Michael Kelly has raised his hand. The applicants, please raise your hand for 85 Bowery. Good evening, everyone. Hello, Michael. Corey is the applicant. Hi. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give a brief summary of the application, hit the main points, and then we'll turn it over to you to add anything or make any corrections. PHX 88 Incorporated doing business as Phoenix Palace is seeking a full on premises license, and the premise is located at 85 Bower between Canal and Hester Street. It's an application for an establishment of 74 people with 33 tables and 68, 66 seats with one bar, one standing bar with no seats. They are serving Asian cuisine from a full kitchen, serving food during the hours of operation. The hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. all days with no televisions and background recorded music only. There are four OPs within 500 feet. Um, this applicant has never previously been a license holder, but he has held, he's never been a full license holder. He has held a restaurant wine, beer wine license since August of 2024 at the same location. So this is technically an upgrade. There were zero three one complaints at this location. So far we've received, we've heard from no residents for or against. 13 residents who live within two blocks signed a petition in favor. And they are proposing ambient background recorded music only with no DJs, no entertainment level music, no live music, no promoted events, scheduled performances, or events with a cover fee. Okay. Okay, you one correction, Clint? Yeah. Uh, we'd be open till midnight. Okay, and I do see this actually down in the lower section. It is 8 a.m. to midnight. I think just up here we had it as well. So it's 8 a.m. to midnight all days. Uh, we're not open at 8 a.m. though. 
So that's one thing that I was going to ask you about. I know you listed 8 a.m., but I think yeah. if you were earlier, it's no later than 8 a.m. So that means you have to be open at 8 a.m. If you're not going to be open at 8 a.m., you need to move that back because, and I'm not sure what time you want to make that, but again, it's no later than. So you can open earlier if you want, but whatever time you put, you have to be open by that by that time. Okay, we'll make that adjustment. It'll be five 5.30. So you want it to be 5.30 to midnight every day? Yes. yes. Okay. And again, if you want to open earlier, if you want to start opening for lunch, I, we would love that. I think we'd encourage that, but just... Yes. Okay. Un so we're Understood. 5.30 to midnight every day. Okay. Yes. Is there anything else that needs to be changed? Or a little bit, yes. Uh Corey's dad owns the Potluck Club at 133 Christie Street, which had an RW that we upgraded to an OP in 2023. We came before you. Uh, Corey and Ricky, his partner, managed the Potluck Club and also managed here. Corey's dad pushed them to open their own place because he watched them operate his place and saw they were ready. Uh, although we're applying for an OP, we will have a limited drink menu with specific cocktails geared towards the dishes we serve, like we do at the Potluck Club. As you said, we submitted signatures. They were from every floor of our building and from residents next door. If Corey wants to say something about the food and... Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we operate Potluck Club for the past few years. You know, we're just kids that truly grew up in Chinatown. This is our community. We want to continue representing our community. Um. And, and building uh, great places. And we're completely a restaurant. You know, last seating is at 9.15 no, and everyone's out, a hard out by midnight. This is not a nightclub. We have no intentions of that. This is strictly restaurant. And we just want to be able to kind of, we won't have bottled, like bottles of alcohol. It's, most of the liquor will be used for mixed cocktails that we make. And some of the things that we get from Hong Kong, like they're, they're uh, canned highballs, so they have some uh, liquor content like vodka, and we want to be able to serve that. That's really basically all this is. Okay. Is there anyone from the public here to speak to this item? I think I... I don't see any Zoom hands raised. Uh, Michelle. Michelle, okay. Michelle, we're promoting you. Please go ahead. Hi, how are you doing again? Um, I just wanted to mention that at uh, this address, which has been in some disrepute in prior years for the people living upstairs, of which there are four apartments per floor. It is essentially an SRO, I believe it still is. So I don't know how everybody signed on to say this was okay. Um, I find that kind of interesting. And I just want this new tenant to be very aware of the tenants above him on the fourth floor, four floors and all the families that are there and be very observant and considerate of them. Um, a hundred percent to get, I mean, we went with the super of the building to talk to the families, to get their signatures. And we, we've also been op operating there, Michelle, for almost a year. So we know the building, they know us. None of them have any complaints. And I do think I, I was just looking for, cause I think there was had the signatures. I think mm, there was definitely signatures from the building. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, there was. Yeah. yeah, there was like five from 85 Bowery and then I think the rest of them were all from 83 Bowery. So it seems, you know, there were from a building that size, I think substantial signatures. So, okay. Thank you, Michelle. And is there anyone else before we move on? Mitchell? No. Okay. Um, committee members, any questions or comments about this application? Cool. 
Okay, um, moving forward then, we're gonna go through the stipulations. Basically, it's gonna be, you know, just confirming what we went through in the earlier discussion of the resolution. And it's gonna be I, Ricky Wynn, as qualified representative of PX, PHX 88 Incorporated, located at 85 Bowery. My license type will be a full liquor, will operate a full service restaurant, specifically an Asian restaurant, with kitchen and open serving food during all its operation. My hours of operation will be 5.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. all days. I will not use outdoor space for commercial use. Um, and you're not having, you hadn't checked it out, but you're not having any security personnel or doormen or anything, right? Because you're a full service, you're a regular restaurant, correct? Yeah, we're just a regular restaurant. There's no need for security. I mean, we have a, a host if anything yeah. happens, but there's no real need for security. There's no line queuing outside. And then I, it's existing soundproofing, right? Yeah. yeah. No issues. Um, and then, so it is, there, I think those, the front facade does open, right? There are, there are open, operable, operable yeah, windows on the front of that space. Mm, there's no yeah. windows. There's a glass door, but we keep it closed unless someone's coming in. Okay, so then that needs to be changed. You'll have a closed, because I think you checked off both. So it's going to be a oh. closed facade with no open doors or windows except the entrance door, which closed by 10 p.m., et cetera. Um, you will not have DJs, live music, third party promoted events, any event in which a cover fee is charged or a scheduled performance. No. Yeah, um, no. You'll play ambient background recorded music only, will not apply for an alteration without coming before CV3 first, will not participate in pub crawls or party buses, will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. Um, you will not have a happy hour. You will not have wait lines outside and you will have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering noise or crowds. We'll post these stipulations beside your liquor license and residents may contact the manager or owner at the number below and it's Ricky Wynn and it is 646-506-5705. Correct. Everything's fine. Okay. Um, so hearing no one else from the committee with any issues, we will move to a vote. Stephen Ballinger? Yes. Daniel Tenow? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Michael Lavario? Yes. Okay. My, the motion has passed. Um, Michael, the office will be getting you out the stipulations soon, tomorrow, probably. And um, there will be instructions on when to get them back. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, we are moving on to number eight, which is Copper and Oak, 157 Allen Street. The applicants are here for Copper and Oak. Please raise your two hands or if you're here in person. Yes. Are they up? Is anyone here for yeah. Copper and Oak? 157 Elm Street. Matsushika. Oh, you both. Okay. Okay. I, okay. I think you've been promoted, so you can go ahead and unmute yourself. And Tomo, can, are you. Can you hear me? Yes, and we can hear you. Are you you're the applicant? Yes. Okay. Do you have Do you have any an attorney or representative here, or just you're just here by yourself? i uh, just by by myself. He he can make it today. So okay, that's that's okay. Um, so as you've heard, I'm going to go through a, a summary of your application, and we'll give you a chance to correct anything. We'll move to members of the public, and then we'll come back to you. Thank you. Okay, so Copper and Oak LLC. Doing business as Copper and Oak is seeking a full premises license and a premises located at 157 Allen Street between Stanton and Rivington. Um, this is an application for an establishment of 30 people with, is it zero tables? Is there no tables? So we have a, a, a seat and uh, we don't make a cocktails. 
So there's more like a high, uh, the standard table rather than actual bar. Do you have high tops? It's like a long high top. So, oh, okay, like a cow, like a high top counter with some stools, is that it? Yes. Okay, so it's, so basically we, we'll count that as, so we would basically say one table with eight seats, is that, or instead uh, of a table, say a bar, a bar a counter with eight seats. So no so, tables. So no table, but it's easy to say one bar because uh, again, like uh, we don't make any cocktail. So it's not like uh, any preparation happen on the bar. So yeah. it is like a table, but it's a long table that the uh, eight seats line up. Okay. Yeah. And then you do have a 14 foot bar though as well, right? Yes. And that's just a stand up bar. You're, you're having seats at the bar? Uh, so that, that seats at the bar, uh, eight seats by the bar. So, Gotcha. So it's just one. So the bar is what you were just talking about is the counter. They're not two separate things. No, no, no. It's only one. So one long table, basically. Eight seats. That's, that's more clear. Okay. And a food prep area serving finger food and small plates, serving food during all hours, no televisions, background recorded music. Um, there were 47 full on-premises liquor licenses within 500 feet. Um, you have never held a liquor license before. We, in a second, we can let you describe some of your experience. Um, 42 residents who live within two blocks of location signed a petition in favor. Um, they're proposing hours of 4 p.m. and closing by 2 a.m. all days. Um, they are not using commercial or outdoor space for commercial use. And it is only recorded background music with no DJs, live music, or scheduled performances. And yeah, so that's that's the kind of brief summary that I kind of took for your application. Do you want to go ahead and just give us a, a short explanation or a description of what you're planning on doing? So uh, I've been working this bar for almost four years, but um, we opened uh, Copper and Rock since 2004, 14, sorry. And um, I was one, one, one of my best friends had been working as a manager. So I, to be honest, I go there like uh, almost every week since like uh, they open, we open. And then uh, I joined the team like uh, four years ago. And then what we doing kind of unique because uh, even bar, we don't make any cocktails and no ice. And then uh, basically we pour one ounce or two ounce of uh, all the spirits. And we, we say like, uh, if, you know, this for sipping purpose. So if somebody start doing the shot, we won once, and then second time we leave the check because uh, we don't want to have any issues with uh, the drunken people, basically. So, uh, yeah, and then I liked uh, this bar so much, and then my bo my boss tried to open the uh, new business in uh, Midtown. So then he said, like, if you want to take it, uh, you know, the, I want to sell it to you. And I said, sure, I, I really love this bar. So. So you've been managing the bar for the last four years, you said, correct? Yes, and um, I, I'm not intent to change any style. Because, uh, uh, I guess it's very unique. I've been travel a couple of country and then I'm from Japan. Uh, I never, even like I never seen that kind of bar not making even cocktails. And then everyone, you know, sipping. And again, like uh, I even need to take like a tip, like, uh, you know, to deal with like uh, drunken people. <laughs> the certificate, because I want to make sure that uh, our establishment is uh, safe, because uh, I understand that alcohol is, you know, could be dangerous, especially if we don't make any cocktails. But we give water and we have a little snack to nibble. So we more ex uh, present like a uh, experience of all the spirits little by little. So we don't need like a lot of music too, because, uh, you know, they want to discuss about uh, what they're having for the spirits. And just confirming, so you're, I know you said you're not changing anything and it's actually, so you're, it's a sale of assets, right? You're, you're buying the business from the previous owner. Yes. As a trend. Okay. And you're not, again, you're not changing any, your hours are staying the same. You're keeping everything exactly the same. Yes. Okay. 
is so okay do you have anything else you you would like to add or explain if not i'm just going to move to see if there's any members of the public here that would like to speak uh yes if i mean uh i think i told everything but I, okay. so the, 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 basically i don't want to change anything so okay. go. good thank you is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak to this item 157 allen street please raise your zoom hand uh, I think Michelle was up from before. I don't yeah. think she's raised her new hand. No. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's no one here. Is there anyone from the committee? Does anyone have any questions for this applicant? Was the space licensed at 2 a.m. from before? Uh, it's the same. The fault, uh, we have a, currently we have a, my boss on, on the Rika license from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. Okay. Right. And then uh, our business hours are uh, uh, 4 to 1. Okay. Um, yeah, so there is, I see there, we, we do have someone to raise their hand, Sam Moskovich. Hello. So I actually came to testify against uh, an application later in the night, but I just wanted to let you know that this is a great bar. Uh, it's really what you do want in a community. Uh, it seems to be a very responsible bar. I've been there a bunch of times over the years. Uh, you know, they don't even let you in and stand at the bar. It's like sitting only, only the eight people or 10 people, you have your drink, you know, one or two drinks, then you leave. Like, highly recommend this bar. So I just wanted to say something nice before we get to the later application that I'm here to oppose. Thank you. Thank, thank you for, for, for the balance, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we did. Anyone have? Anyone have? I don't think anyone in the community had any questions or comments or anything. Okay, um, so I think we're. If, if that's the case, we're ready to move to a resolution for the same stipulations as before. Okay, so Tomo, we're going to go ahead and bring up on the screen the stipulations that will be with this with your license, and we'll read. And it's, it's basically what exactly what was approved previously. So we're just going to be confirming this because this is what you'll be signing and we'll go to, to the state. Okay. Thank you very much. So it's, there we go. It's, and it's I, and is it Tomo, Tomomori? Yes. Matsushita, M -A -T -S -H -S -T -A. Yes. As a qualified representative of New Oak and Copper LLC located at 157 Allen Street, Agrees to the following stipulations. Uh, my license will be a full liquor license and will operate a tavern with, and I mean, you do have, you did a check off the full kitchen, but you have a prepper, you have bar snacks or like light snacks, right? Yeah, yes, we have a preparation, but um, uh, not actual yeah. kitchen, so. We're gonna check off less than a full service kitchen with food okay. served in all hours of operation. And then your hours of operation will be 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. all days. Um, you will not use outdoor space for commercial use. Um, you don't have security or doorman. Um, as soon as already soundproofing, you don't need digital soundproofing. And I know it's a closed fixed facade. You will not have DJs, live music, third party promoted events, any event in which a cover fee is charged or scheduled performances. You will play ambient recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration without coming to CB3. You will not participate in pub crawls or party buses. You will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. You will not have a happy hour of drink specials. You will have a, you will not have wait lines outside. And I don't think you had checked off. You'll have a, a staff person responsible for ensuring no order your crowds. And that's not someone that has to be out there all the time, but it just means someone that if for some reason people are congregating, they go out and shoot them away. Okay. So we'll check that off. Um, you will conspicuously post a stipulation by your liquor license and residents may contact the manager or owner at the number below. And the number is 917-647-2430. Uh, no, 917-474-9324. Uh, okay, so 917, repeat that one more time. 917-474-9324. Uh, yep. Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we're going to move to a vote. It would, and we'll start Stephen Ballinger. Yes. Daniel Tanow. Yes. Clint Smeltzer. Yes. Michael Lavario. Yes. Okay. 
So you, the motion was approved. Uh, the office will be sending out these stipulations with instructions. You'll need to get them signed and notarized and have them back to the office by the date that's listed. Okay. Which I think, Susan, is it going to be this Friday? Yes. So we're hopefully going to get these to you tomorrow, and then you'll have to have them signed and notarized and return to the office by Friday. Okay. Uh, so is this sending it to my address or uh, copper and work? It will be... He asked if it will be sent to his address. It'll be emailed. It'll be emailed. It'll be emailed. It definitely won't be regular mail. It'll be emailed and it'll go to. Did you you had an attorney? Uh, I have it, but then he, I think he's away, so that's why I'm kind of wondering. And also, uh, I, I just got the big. Check on the application on on what your application because we can change it and send it directly to you if that's the case. Give me oh, just that'd be one, great. Yeah. Give me just one second. Let me see who's listed. I'm sorry for the trouble. No, no, but I would rather make sure it gets to the right place. So on the application we had, yeah, so it looks like, the, the, your attorney did not list an email address, so I'm not sure. You know what? Give us your email address now, just so we'll take note of that. Okay. Can I uh, sure. leave on the chat? Okay, so the office so that it gets to you. Yeah. Oh. If you if you want, you could send it to the chat. Just if you want, just go ahead and give it to me now, and I'll write it down. Okay. I, uh, T O M O. Yeah. Dot. M A T S U S I H I T A. Yeah. At gmail.com. Gmail? Was it? Yes. Okay. I'll include this with a stipulation. We'll make sure that it gets copied to you as well. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to number nine, which is ops. Variety Pizza Corporation at 176 Second Avenue. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good. 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 Yeah, just make sure because people on will hear you in the room, but if you're not using the mic, it will sure. probably no, take up no problem. The people that are here. Oh, so. I was, I'm going to give the brief summary and then we'll hand it over to you. Just get this over. Okay. So, Second Avenue Pizza Palace Corporation for slash Variety Pizza Corp. Which, what is your official name? Is it the, the name of the company is Second Avenue? Second Avenue. Yeah, we hadn't formed the corporation yet. And okay. the, the first name, the Variety Pizza Corp, was not available. So, okay. So, Second Avenue Pizza Palace is, is the, the corporate name. name. Yeah. Okay. So, Second Avenue Pizza Palace Corporation is doing business as Ops. Yes, that's correct. It is seeking a full liquor license in the premises located at 176 Second Avenue between 11 and 12th Street. It's an application for an establishment of 74 people with 19 tables and 54 seats, one stand up bar with seven seats, serving Neapolitan style pizza with a full kitchen, serving food during all of operation, um, no TVs, background music only. There are 12 full on premises liquor licenses within 500 feet. Um, this, this location was formerly Pizzeria. Numero 28. Um, this applicant is currently a license holder in Brooklyn. I think you have six in CV1 in Brooklyn and, or no, sorry, six licenses in Brooklyn, CV1 and CV4. Is that? That's correct. Okay. okay. Um, 12 residents who live within two blocks of this location mm -hmm. signed a petition in favor. Um, They're proposing hours of 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. all days. Uh, you did not check off if you were proposing any commercial use of outdoor space. It will have a closed fixed facade, um, ambient background recorded music only, and happy hours of love like. So. Thank you for the yeah. summary. My name is Benjamin Kornga. Uh, I'm the attorney for the applicant. I have with me tonight Gavin Compton and Mike Fadum, who are two of the principals. I'll turn it over to them in a bit, uh, just to get more, more background on the actual operation. But just two notes, 
One is on the on the hours of operation. On Friday and Saturday, we are requesting 1 a.m. Um, and uh, I, I would note that Numero 28 did have 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Uh, and for the outdoor seating, we are going to be applying for a dining out NYC permit. I, I note also that Numero 28 had a DCA licensed sidewalk cafe. So we're essentially trying to mimic their operation. Uh, we're looking for on the outdoor, we're looking for basically closing an hour prior to the inside. So 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and midnight Friday through Saturday. Um, I'll turn it over to Mike and Gavin just to give you a little more background on the locations. Sure. Um, hey. uh, we have a, a number of ops in Bushwick that opened eight years ago. Uh, so we're basically looking to do the same thing there here. Um, we do sourdough pizza, natural wine. Um, we've been recognized for both on um, all the lists. And um, yeah, just love making pizza, want to serve more people. Um, yeah, just keep going right now. I'm Gavin. Uh, I own Ops with my, we also own a restaurant called Leo, which is also a restaurant that's in Brooklyn. Mike and I met uh, when he worked for me as a barista in 2010 for a coffee company I own called Dry, which we have eight locations around the city. Um, and then, you know, getting to know each other, we opened an Ops together. In addition to Ops and Leo and Dry, I own a diner in Greenpoint called Three Different Diner, which is like a classic diner, as well as four Canada restaurants that are like Mr. Shake Shack or Pops. The uh, first one of those opened 12 years ago now, I think. Uh, so a long time operator. I used to work at a little kitchen around the corner because this location which is pretty special to me. And then also before that, I worked at Around the Clock, which was kind of my go for the diner, which was up the street on Stax. So kind of like a long time. I never lived, I've always lived in Brooklyn, but I've always lived in this village. And just a Kind of highlight that I know there's always the concern of like a bait and switch going on. Gavin's on six licenses, Mike's on two. They're all rest, you know, they're all restaurants or hamburgers, restaurants. None of them turned into a bar. They've been operating for a long time. Ops, as Mike said, has very good press. People that are, you know, they love the pizza, they love the wine selection, and this is going to be operating as an ops as well. Okay. Um, we're going to just quickly turn it over to see if there's anyone from the public here to speak to this item. Is everyone here for 176 Second Avenue? Please raise your Zoom hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to committee questions. Anyone from the committee? You guys are a uh, legit pizza operation, so I think it's just replacing numerical. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, you're basically, like you said, you're doing pretty much exactly the same thing as what number 28 had. So, you know, I don't see any major issues with that. The one thing that I, I will point out or ask is, I know you were saying you would prefer the outdoor space to close an hour before, which would be 11. We're asking all outdoor spaces to close at 10 across the board. So it's not just you, it's it's everyone. everyone so that. is that something that you agree to that? or just, is there any flexibility given no. that it was previously DCA? Like, I, I thought there was an exception if it was previously DCA license. Even our DCA license, I would, I haven't looked it up, but I'd be willing to bet that their sidewalk cafe was only until 10. Uh, uh, this one? No, I, I have the stipulation from 2016 that they signed. I didn't bother pull that, I didn't pull that but. So we're, we're just, we're trying to mimic their hours for the outdoor, for the sidewalk cafe. When did they come? 2016. 2016. So didn't we didn't we vote to? It has been voted since. I mean, and you you are right that they did have that, but I mean, it's something we haven't given it to anyone else. Okay. And it's something that basically what we're doing with this with the new open dining program, you're not having to come to us. If you're agreeing to the administrative stipulations, which is closing at 10, it doesn't come to the committee. It's just put through and goes to the city. Is there any flexibility on Friday and Saturday to do 11? No. 
We have res this is about residents, you know, it's the noise outside. Didn't we also vote to, to have a yeah. uniform? We've, we've actually voted, we've been discussing this with the SLA specifically, and we already voted to have a uniform uh, closing time at 10 o'clock. We voted on the committee voted last month, and the full yeah. board will be voting yeah. this month. Um, it's all over, all over community board three. And it's a way to allow to support outdoor dining for you, but still be able to have residents be able to, you know, either go to put their kids to bed at 10 o'clock. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's I mean, sorry. You don't have any competitors or yeah, it's not, it's to trust us, it's not just it's it's not even existing places. We're not giving it's not anyone, it's just it's yeah. something like she said, we're trying to do to help. Ease the conflict between outdoor dining and the residents. So, okay. But other than that, I have no other questions or issues. Like you said, you're pretty much replicating numeral 28, and I don't remember them ever being a problem. So, okay. Um, so then I think we're just going to go ahead and put the stipulations up, which we just kind of went through with you and just make sure you agree with everything. Okay. So there you go. I'm Michael, is it Fat Fadan? Fatum. Fatum. I'm Michael Fatum as a qualified representative of, and you probably do need to. There you go. Was, okay, so that's the correct corporate name, corporate name at 176 Second Avenue. I agree to the following stipulations. My license will be a full liquor license, will operate a full service restaurant, specifically a pizza restaurant. And we're not, I know you said the Neapolitan, but we don't need to be that specific that way. Someone comes in and says you're not truly Neapolitan. We want to avoid any of those questions. So, um, with kitchen open, serving food during the hours of operation, my hours of operation will be 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Sunday through Thursday, 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. Friday and Saturday. Um, I will close all after dining allowed under the temporary open restaurants program, which that actually to be changed, it's not temporary anymore. Um, by 10 p.m., we're not having any speakers or TV monitors outside. Um, you, you're not having the security or doorman. Um, I'm assuming you don't. You're not really installing that. I don't think it was ever a problem before. So, um, you will close any front and rear facade doors and windows at 10 p.m. or when any time amplified sound is playing. You will not have DJs, live music, third party promoted events, any event in which a cover fee is charged or scheduled performances. Um, you will play ambient recorded background music only. You will not apply for an alteration without coming to CV3. Will not participate in pub crawls or party buses. Will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. Um, you will oh, actually. I don't. You hadn't checked off. Did you want? Do you want a happy hour? No. I mean, it's we don't we don't care either way. It's just something that you put in. So. Yeah, probably won't. So, okay. So we'll not have a happy hour. Um, we'll not have wait lines outside. We'll have a staff person making sure there's no loitering, noise, or crowds. We'll post a stipulation by the liquor license, and residents may contact the owner and manager at the number below. And it's Michael Fadan or Mr. Krause, all right. Okay, okay. okay. Um, phone number 917-664-3342. That's right. Okay. Uh, so we'll move to a vote. Yes. Stephen Ballinger. Yes. Daniel. Yes. Ben Smeltzer. Yes. Mike Lovardo. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So the office will be sending you out. I'm, I'm assuming they'll, they'll probably go to you. Just get them signed, notarized, and back to the office by Friday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for being with us. And good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In there. Okay. Now it's all right. Yeah, we just got down here. So I think this is on and I can push the back and actually turn it on. Okay. We're going to move on to item number 10, which is Bowery Hospitality at 217 Bowery. The applicants are here. Please raise your zoom in. I don't know why it wants to change your speaking line. It's here. Why suddenly? Not sure who thought was speaking in another language. But... Hey guys. This is Joseph back. <laughs> Joseph back. Yes. With, uh... oh. Yep. Um, do you, and the applicant's there with you, correct? Correct. Yes. 
Okay, give me just one second to get the summary up. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Sorry about that, I just had to get the document. Okay. Um, so Bowery Street Hospitality is seeking a full on-premises license in the premises located at 217 Bowery between Rivington and Stanton. It's an application for an establishment of 250 people with 26 tables and 96 seats, two bars, one on the ground floor with 11 seats and a basement bar with eight seats, um, serving elevated American cuisine, from a prep kitchen with food serving during all of, served during all of operation, no televisions. Um, you will have live, you are proposing to have live bands, DJs, and streamed recorded music. There are 29 full on premises licenses within 500 feet. Um, this location has previously been operated as a nightclub, Katra. Um, the applicant has been a license holder since 2006 at Rose Bar, Hero, Electric Room, and Butterfly. There were 15 311 complaints to this location since 2018. Um, at the moment, we've received no support for or um, concerns against this application. And it was 42. 42. 42. Yeah, 42. I didn't send me that at the end. 42 residents who live within two blocks of location signed a petition in favor. Um, they are proposing the hours of opening no later than 5 p.m., closing by 4 a.m. And 2 p.m. to 4 a.m. That was, sorry, that was Monday through Friday and 2 p.m. to 4 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. Um, they are not using the outdoor space for commercial use. It will have a closed fixed facade. Again, they will play, they will have live music and DJs at entertainment level. Um, that, I don't think they had checked off. Yeah, you had it checked off if you were having happy hours. We can get to that in a second. And I think that generally kind of gives a summary. If you want to go ahead and make any corrections or add to anything I just said. Yeah, a couple of things. Thanks for the overview, Clint. Um, this is a sale of assets. Um, it currently exists a space there. It's been licensed for 20 plus years, it seems, uh, maybe through a few different owners in this space. Um, so sale of assets here, not a brand new license. So hopefully this is another one of those net zero situations or net positive. Uh, in addition to the signatures and support, we also got a number of letters of support. I want to make sure you guys saw those. I think there's four of them in the packet. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention those. And including a letter from the direct upstairs neighbor uh, who was very excited at this uh, potential change of operating <laughs> space. Um, before we go further, I just wanted my client to uh, introduce himself, talk a little bit about his history, um, as well as what he'd like to do here in the space. How you doing? <clears throat> My name is Nur Khan. I have lived in downtown Manhattan for the past 30 years, 10 in Soho and the past 20 years in community board number three neighborhood. So I do understand it. Uh, I've owned and operated bar lounges and restaurants in downtown Manhattan for the past 30 years. Wax, Sway, Hero, Rose Bar, Electric Room, Butterfly are examples. Uh, I'm personally on site all the time to monitor my venues. I take great pride in my establishments and have very exacting standards and operate to the highest level. I have an unblemished track record with zero violations on my liquor license and venues for the past 30 years. Uh, the majority of my venues, I would say, uh, for the last 20 years have been in luxury hotels, such as Rose Bar, Gramercy Park Hotel, Butterfly, and 60 Soho Hotel. Um, being in hotels has made me an expert in volume management and maintaining proper sound levels for the guests as well as the hotel owners. So I'm extremely qualified in maintaining harmony in an area that is important to the residents. Uh, I'm hoping to start a long relationship with the neighborhood. And for those of you who enjoy a fun cocktail lounge with great food and beautiful art, uh, I'm confident you're gonna enjoy this project. So thank you. And, um... Within the application, you see that it mentions um, background as well as entertainment level music. It's two floors to this space. There's a ground floor and then there's a subterranean floor. The idea is that the ground floor will always be that back that background volume 
and then downstairs might get a little bit louder. While there is soundproofing already in this space, uh, it is not up to NERS standards. So when he gets in there to do construction, he is installing more and proper soundproofing. And he's also ripping out their current speaker system, which he also doesn't like, to install proper speakers to make sure the acoustics are appropriate. Uh, so on that note, you were saying, or I know there was live music was checked off. Is the live music only going to be in the, the basement level as well? So the live music is very few and far between, like maybe once a month, something like that. So I should have been more uh, uh, thorough with that, but it would only be in the basement. Correct. And what are you, when you're talking about live music, what are you, what are your proposing? What are your thoughts about what that would be? Uh, it would be special bands that they happen to be in town. Uh, I usually pull favors from from artists uh, that I like. So if I can have a treat for for people while they're in town and do something special and a one off, then that's what I do. But it's not live music per se on a regular basis down there. It's unscheduled. <clears throat> and but it would be it would be like an amplified band. You're not talking about just like an accused acoustic little trio playing in a corner you're talking about an actual Me either but what it, when i do these it's usually only a 40 minute long set so it's not even like the whole night okay so yeah so in a sense of being it wouldn't be a live music night these would be more like limited shows or something where... so, like maybe maybe once a month probably more likely once every three months but um yeah and it's mostly uh never more than a 40 minute set and they're okay. plugging into the main, the main um, speaker system of the house. They're not bringing huge speakers and setting up a rock concert. Correct. It is still controlled by the limiters in the space. Correct. Okay. And are you are you planning to work with a sound engineer for your? Yes, right. I always do. I always I always use a sound engineer, and you know, like. The majority of my bars uh, have been on the ground floors with, you know, the rooms are directly above me on the third floor in most cases. So at any given time, I have between 200, 400 people sleeping over me. So I'm very used to controlling the volume and uh, I'm very keen on, you know, setting the levels and, and being on. Great. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move to, uh, uh, just, I don't want to cut you off. Are you, do you have anything else to add before we move to the public? No. Okay. We're going to see if there's anyone here from the public to speak to this item. I don't see any hands. Is there anyone here in person to speak to this item? No. Okay. There is so, someone who is the gallery owner directly next door. I know he wanted to speak. I gave him the link. Is what, do you know what his name? Oh, someone did just raise their hand. Just saw a hand raised. Go up. His name is Benjamin. He said... He wrote the same thing. Yeah, okay. Oh, he yes, I, he was one of the letters that was submitted, I think. I do remember that. He's in the Zoom. He's trying to get in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the letter the letter summarizes it at the end of the day. I'll he, just let him know you, you wrote the letter. He, he would be excited at the opportunity to upgrade the operator to something that hopefully would work better with his gallery. He's had some issues with the current operator, and he... Uh -huh. There's other places, but that's that's the gist. This of it. is a guy who owns a gallery directly adjacent to it. Um, he wanted yeah. to speak. He's trying to get in on the link, but he can't right now. Yeah, I, I saw his hand. His hand flashed for a second, and then but I don't. Oh wait, it just went up. It, it is it that that Ben go back? There, there we go. Okay, okay we're gonna Benzie. We we promoted you. You can go ahead and un. <laughs> oh great, great. Am I on? You are. Please go ahead. Oh. Okay, great. Uh, so my name is Benzi. Um, I'm the I'm I'm honoring the gallery of that next door, which is uh, called Time to Be Happy. Uh, we have a little gathering here tonight, but basically the uh, just so you know, the galleries uh, uh, follow two rules. One, I don't charge the artists uh, to um, to exhibit, and I have an artist in residency. I don't take any commissions from the artists. So this is gallery is basically a gift for the artist. It's based on uh, um, art that I'm selling and donations and been going on for a couple of years and it's been very successful. We just moved to Soho. Um, I'm also the owner of uh, Baked by Melissa Cupcakes. Um, the co-founder 
I'm the person who uh, decided to, uh, you know, came up with the idea to make the mini. And I know Noor for uh, just when I moved to New York back in the day for about, I don't know, about 15 to like 16 years. Um, I can say that I've, I've, I've established my uh, New York uh, experience a lot, like, you know, after the 8 p.m. life uh, with Noor. Uh, great guy. I, uh, every, uh, the locations that he uh, put up together are always very creative. Um, he would actually like, take a space that spaces that used to be like not cool, not working well, or, you know, most important are tracking, not uh, the people that neighbors are happy with and uh, bringing the people that are very respectable for the space, for the noise, for the area. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sure you've, you've read the letters and you've read a lot of, uh, everything that uh, people had to say. But I think, you know, for me, the most important as a gallery owner uh, uh, next door to that space is that I want peace of mind and I, I want to have uh, the right people coming in. Um, hopefully people that are actually coming and loving art and, and, and you know, uh, uh, coming and, and uh, uh, coming in and, and buying the art. But for me, the most important is not to have people yelling out and, and making so much noise next door. Um, and I couldn't recommend or think of anybody better, honestly. I've been living in New York for 24 years, better than Noor. Great. Thank you very much, Benzie. My pleasure. Okay, I don't think there's anyone else, so we're going to move on to committee members. Does anyone have any questions or concerns about this application? Um, I uh, live on Rivington Street. A little further down, but I walk often from uh, Nolita past this area, and the current operator does not do a good job of managing the people outside. There's lots of people just always hanging out outside and wrapping around onto Rivington Street. So I, I want to ask if you have a plan to uh, deal with that. You said you don't have outside lines, but uh, you do have a person to manage people outside of. Yes, absolutely. I will address that. Um, I've had, again, 30 years of experience dealing with this. Uh, one of my, you know, very popular places was in the Rose Bar in the Gramercy Park Hotel, which is one of the quietest blocks I can think of uh, as far as residences. And I never had an issue there or any of my places. But I would happily say the first thing I would do is remove the steel barricade that is in front of your building or in the neighborhood because it's an eyesore and uh, it's completely unnecessary for my type of business. So, And just, I, I don't know if you guys got the security plan. It came in later on today, but NERS had a security company already walked through the place, put together a plan for interior security as well as outside security. As mentioned, they'll be using a reservation system primarily to mitigate lines outside and he will have at least one guard outside, if not more, to maintain order, keep people moving, prevent any kind of overcrowding. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of people on the Bowery really feeling the, the need for that security presence outside, some blocks more than others, but he's absolutely prepared to have active front door people. Okay, so just to confirm though, you are agreeing to not have lines though? Yes. Okay, that was just making, because I don't think that was actually checked off on the application questionnaire, but just confirming that. Yep. Okay, and I mean, that I, that was my primary concern because I don't live down there, but I've been by there at times and it has been crowded. Or I've gone in there myself and I can completely sympathize with anyone yeah. who has complaints the way it's operated now and uh, I can confidently say it will be a, a significant improvement. And again, I just wanted to, I know you, you said it, I just wanted to confirm. So the, the ground floor level will be only ambient background recorded music, any of the live music and you, were you planning, I don't think you were planning or you had checked off DJs. I think it was just basically live music and then downstairs, when it wasn't live music, would it be at entertainment level or would it be at background level? Let's get off the live music thing because I, I'm not planning on having live music. It's like once every few months, a special treat. Um, I do have DJs in all my bars and I would have DJs on the main level, but it's an ambient DJ level. I'm not trying to, it's not a dance party, but I still think it's 
preferential to have DJs playing as opposed to just a random playlist. So it's ambient DJ level on the main floor and entertainment level downstairs in the back. Okay. So that's what I was going to confirm. So still even upstairs, even when it's, you know, it's just going to be all the time it's at ambient downstairs, it would be entertainment level. Correct. And the entirety of the space is going to be soundproof when he gets into construction. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think Michael or anyone else? Um, so this is a commercially zoned. And it's been there. I mean, it's, there. it's again, it's it's replacing what's there and they're not yeah. they're not adding to it. So hopefully, hopefully improving on it. So okay. Um, so here are no other comments or concerns. I think we'll move. Sounds like we're moving to the direction of a resolution. We're gonna go ahead and pull up the stipulation form. So I think what was listed before was, was Gabrielle Tre Tresoldi? General manager and director of operations. Okay, so should should she is she gonna be the one that's signing the stipulations and Make it you. Oh, no, that's me. I'm not yeah, sure we, why that's there. We can make it NER. He's he's All a point right. of contact for any noise issues or anything like that. Okay, so we can put that at the bottom, but you're going to be the person that's actually signing it. The manager that they can contact, we can list him as well. But Perfect. So it's A-H-A-N. Nope. K-H. Okay, K-H-A-N. Con. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so New York Con as qualified representative of Bowery Street Hospitality, located at 217 Bowery, agrees to the following stipulations. My license is a full liquor license, will operate a cocktail lounge with less than a full kitchen serving food during the hours of operation. The hours of operation will be Monday to Friday, 5 p.m. to 4 a.m., Saturday, Sunday, 2 p.m. to 4 a.m. You will not use outdoor space for commercial use. Um, you will employ a doorman or security personnel. Are you, what are you, are you going to have, what, two? Are you, what are you, what are your thoughts on the security? Is it? It's on the security plan. I'll basically do the same thing. It's a tried and true formula that I use. And it's one security person outside with a door manager. And then I will have one security inside at the podium uh, and the, the vestibule area as well that can monitor both floors. Okay. So, so basically two, two, we'll just say two security. Two security and one door manager. Okay. And then you are planning on installing soundproofing or additional soundproofing because I think you said it's inadequate what's there. Whatever it takes. Yep. So, and we'll say, I think what, if you heard what we said earlier, our standard language is kind of you install soundproofing to ensure noise is not audible in the neighboring apartments. I've done it a thousand times, so. Yes. Okay. Great, perfect, that makes it easy. And then, and now are you, it's a closed fixed facade, you're not having any open doors or wind or open windows or any operable windows? No. Okay, so we'll check that off, closed fixed facade. So you will have DJs, live music, third party promoted events. No, and you, no third party promoted events. Not have third party promoted, okay, so just internal. And then what you are ha having cover fees? On it's, occasion. It's possible. Maybe on yeah. the weekends. And then you are, you may be having scheduled performances. I'm sorry? And you may, so you are planning at some point to have some scheduled performances where you would have like a schedule. Once in a while. Okay. So we'll leave that unchecked. Um, and then as far as, and we said, Live music will be is once a month only in the basement, or is once a month? Maybe not even, maybe, but that's fine. But still, I mean, okay, so you don't have to have it once a month, but yeah, is that it's 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 and then only in the basement? Um, and then we do need to specify that the the main level will be ambient music, uh, ambient recorded, yeah, because, yeah, so ambient recorded background music only, or, or you can on the main on the main level, but at a respectable level. And then in the basement, it would be... You can correct that. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's gonna be DJs on the ground floor as well, Clint. It's just gonna be a lower level of music. Yeah. Thank you. So Michael, change that to the main level, not just recorded background, because it will be like... Correct. So you recorded music and DJs, 
at Palm Beach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then the base, and then any live music and DJs in the basement will be at entertainment level. Correct. Correct. Okay. I will not apply for an alteration without coming to CB3. Will not be included in pub crawls or party buses. Will not have unlimited drink specials, including boozy brunches. And then, I don't, did you want a happy hour? No. Okay, so we'll not have happy hours. Um, we'll not have wait lines outside. We'll have a staff person responsible for ensuring no loitering, noise, or crowds. We'll post the stipulation by your license, and residents may contact the owner manager at the number below. And then this, well, this do you want to be Gabrielle or Gabriel? Is that the person, the contact person, or? Yeah. So, so well, yeah. yeah, so that would be Gabriel Trisoldi on that line. Okay. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. And then you'll be still the one signing at the bottom. So you'll sign and get it notarized, but then that and that number is correct for him. Uh yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Okay. So everything you agree to everything, we're gonna go ahead and move to a vote. Steven? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Clint, yes. Michael? Yes. Okay. So again, this will be emailed to you hopefully tomorrow. Joseph, and just get them signed, notarized, and back to us by Friday. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Clint. Appreciate it. Have a good night, guys. You too. Thanks a lot. Okay. One more. Number 11, New York Harbor Sites, LLC, 299 South Street. Yeah, Okay, let me get the summer here. Okay, so this is New York Harbor Sites LLC doing business as New York Harbor Sites is seeking a foreign premises license for a commercial tour vessel that will dock in the premises located at 299 South Street. Um, this is an application for a vessel with a capacity of 150 people with six tables, 30 seats, one bar, food served from a food prep area, serving food during all its operation. Um, the applicants have never previously been a license holder, but have worked in numerous similar establishments and tour companies. Um, there were three commercial remote complaints at location, but in this case, it doesn't really apply because you're not even there yet. And it's not really a real location. Um, we had, know we have some residents here, I think, that are going to speak to this. We had 39 residents who live within two blocks location signed a petition in favor. Um, they are proposing hours of 12, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. all days. They will have one security to assist patrons on and off board. Um, yeah, this, so just for everyone's note, we, this is the first time we've ever had a vessel license come to us. So a lot of our standard resolution stipulations are kind of different and don't necessarily apply. So we're kind of crafting this one as we go tonight. So um, I'm going to kind of leave it at that and then hand it over to you to give us a little description of what you're proposing. Great. Hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Anthony Caraballo. I'm the representative for the applicants, Keith Ackman and Ava Lee. As you've heard, it's a vessel OP. They're not very common licenses. I'll briefly go into a little description and I'm going to hand it off to Keith and Eva. Keith's going to talk about the history of the boat and the nature of the boat. Eva's going to talk about the outreach. So essentially, this is a tour boat. So it's harbor sites. Essentially, these are Statue of Liberty tours that take about an hour and a half all in off the boat. So it's an hour tour. It's a quick run to the Statue of Liberty and back. This will be about 85 to 90 percent of their business. Um, they welcome charters uh, for the future, and we indicated that in our submission. But for right now, this is a tour board. Um, so that's the scenario with that. When we sent the notice into the board on August 15th, I immediately contacted Susan, knowing this was not the typical application you guys get on a daily basis. So Susan and I, Susan was gracious, spoke to Keith and I at the time. Ava wasn't on that call, told us exactly who to reach out to. There's a gentleman, Trevor Holland, we immediately reached out to. 
Trevor recommended we reach out to a young lady, Sonia Nagan. So we did all that. We did all the outreach. Um, and again, Ava's going to talk about that more. So I'm going to hand it off to Keith right now to discuss nature, his history with the boat, because it's very important for the committee and the members of the community to understand that this is not a corporate run vessel. I've done other vessels. First and foremost, the capacity in a lot of these vessels are six, north of 600. This is 150. They anticipate an average of 50 to 75. That, that's what it's towards have been running, essentially. So that's important for the community to understand that. Again, I've done an investor license, it's at 600. Um, there could be potential problems with those type of operations. This is not that. So I said that I'm gonna hand it off to Keith and then Eva's gonna follow up with the outreach. Thank you. How are you doing everybody? Keith Atten, I'm the captain and operator and owner of the World Plan. Um, I appreciate the opportunity and time. Uh, working in the industry uh, pretty much prior my whole life. Uh, father was in this. I got into it uh, when I was about 13, 14 officially. Uh, I got my license at 19. I've been licensed now 20 years. This is my 20th year. I hold a large license, one of the largest that you can get uh, besides going ocean going. Uh, I take this industry very seriously, safety wise, uh, for the passengers that I put aboard my vessel and on top of any other vessel that I operate. Um, Working uh, as a for hire captain all these years, I always strive to get a vessel of my own. Uh, finally, having this opportunity to do so, I was a fisherman by trade. Unfortunately, the fishing industry has gone down the tubes in New York. Um, I wanted to still put something forward for the people, um, you know, to show them a good time safely. And uh, tourism was something that always piqued my interest. Uh, for the last six years, I've been operating. Some other vessels that do tourism. That's where I met my partner, Eva. Uh, she's been doing you know, her thing for a long time. She'll be able to speak about that. Um, we got together and we said, hey, why don't we do something? You know, you know the tourism end of it, and I know the best end of it. Uh, so we put our money together and we bought ourselves a really nice boat. It's a custom built boat out of Connecticut. She's one of a kind, she's very pretty. Um, I could speak for hours on it. I really could. I took a lot of pride in it. I spent months up there when I got her. She was, uh, she was in rough shape. I slept on the boat. I slept in my car. Uh, I was on ladders. It's all true, you know, sanding, grinding, doing everything myself. Every, pretty much, I want to say 90% of the paint that's on that boat. And everything, uh, top side and below, I did the work. So to say, you know, that I put pride in it, what I, the product I put out is absolutely so. Um, it's a representative, uh, representation of myself and what I want to put forward. Um, I know the history of what's going on in New York Harbor and probably in the community too. Um, like Anthony said, I do not want to put something forward that is going to cause any harm to any community. As I grew up in Cheapside Bay, Brooklyn, which is a small you know, community myself, um, I want to put forward a, a good tour, but that's what I want. Um, I'd like to sell some booze on board, sure. You know, to, if somebody comes on on a hot summer day, they want a cold beer. You know, their wives are there, they want to have you know, a glass of wine. Um, it's something that could help us out financially. Um, something I think everybody could appreciate. Um, going back and forth to the Statue of Liberty and seeing the, you know, the sights, especially this time of year, is something really nice. And I think everybody should really enjoy it. Uh, I like to travel, I'm a vacationer. I go away, I want to you know, do something, I want to get a good product for my price. That's what I want to follow. I don't want to, you know, put out anything that's overpacking and over, you know, you know, throwing people out to the street or anything like that. I just, we're looking to run a good, clean business. And uh, commercial dockage is slim. Uh, you know, Pier 36 is a large commercial space where we put it on. Um, I, I, I want to add, I don't want to go on forever, but I do want to add, when I was in the waiting room, I did see things that were up there. You have pamphlets here about, you know, what you can do, and I heard in some of the other meetings about, what are they doing for the community? Now, uh, I can say for one thing, I'm an operator and all that. You can get a direct line to me if there's anything wrong with my vessel. I can speak for myself and all that. You can call me, you can show up to my boat, I will be there 99% of the time. All right, if there's any issues or you want something, somebody to call and see what's going on. Um, there's things here about kids. Now, I grew up as somebody who maybe wasn't the best teenager. 
Uh, I can say Boeing and in this industry saved me in a lot of ways. Um, I would always love to give that to other kids because it's a trait. This isn't just something, this is a trait that you can learn. You can make a good living anywhere in the United States, as long as there's water, you can make a living. If you put time on a deck of a boat, you can get yourself a job. Um, you can go out and you can turn your life around. To give kids an opportunity to do something like that is not just about money. It's about something that I was, and I would like to do that for other kids. You have things here that I noticed that were for employee workshops, employee workshops, college tours, SAT prep, cooking classes. I would be more than willing to put my vessel on a pamphlet like this for you guys and have anybody who wanted to come out, I would do it on my own dollar and take my boat out and burn my own fuel to show kids if there was a group of kids who wanted to go out and do that. And I don't want to sound cliche or like somebody else said this. I can only prove what I could say with my word. And it's something like that, that uh, and I can have many people vouch for me that you know, I'm a person that, that can do something like that. Yeah, volunteer, connect, mobilize, stuff like this. It, it, same, same thing, you know, um, giving back to the community. Um, that's something I can do. I can't offer a lot, but I can offer what my vessel can do. Um, and uh, that's really it. I mean, in a nutshell, what, who I am and what I want to do. And um, if there was an issue where I could address it, for, uh, I would do so. I don't want to run into all hours of the night. I want to run during the morning and the afternoons and during the day and the sunsets and show people the sunsets. And that's the truth. Thank you for listening. Hi, um, my name is Eva Lee. I've been in the sightseeing industry since about 1992. I worked with uh, different bus companies. Uh, in regards to operations, I have experience in moving huge crowds of people, organizing them, lining them up and moving them and keeping them under control. Um, I'm in regards to community boards, I, many years ago, they brought a, they were bringing buses down the west side of 8th Street. And the bus, co bus companies maybe didn't care. But when one day they had brought dogs out to stop a bus, I went there because the driver called me and then we immediately changed the route. I was involved with um, the sound, uh, with the, the residents around NYU, they were complaining about the sound, uh, the amplified sound. So we were very, I was very much in support of working with the community to put the, the headphones on buses. Um, I spoke with Mr. Holland and I spoke with uh, Ms. Castro and I iterated how we want to work with the community in the past and some of the companies I've worked for, we did you know, help build playgrounds. Um, schools complained that a bus was by a playground because the DOT just gave a stop. And we, but when I found out, I had it moved to a place where there was only vacant lots. Um, I've had experience in dealing with the community uh, I have been working out of Pier 36 for the last six years. Uh, one community member had um, spoken to me regarding buses stopping on certain streets. It actually, the car alarm was going off. Uh, since then we have uh, employed a person that if we do have a few buses, that that person would drive around, park the bus, stay with the driver, ensure that no residents are disturbed. We are aware that there are issues with Pier 36. We are a family owned operated business. My son actually benefited from Keith's uh, training. He is 19 and he's one of the youngest captains in the harbor. Uh, as I told Mr. Holland and Ms. Castro, we are here to be part of the community. Um, we know there's issues at Pier 36 with cleanliness. We know the pool is coming. They're gonna put the bathrooms. Uh, we wanna be part of this community. That's why we came here to seek this license and not somewhere else. We're showing our faces. We're saying we're here. We want to be part of the community. If you find an issue with us, come straight to us. Uh, we will have security uh, on the vessel uh, and checking people in and out. All of our employees are licensed and trained in safety and security. Uh, bags are checked. Um, people will not be getting off a boat and a sightseeing tour drunk. 
Um, at the most, I have a beer or two. Um, you know, I, I had very positive uh, conversations with Mr. Holland and Ms. Castro that I would like to continue that dialogue after this meeting, whatever the outcome might be, because we need to show that we, we will be operating out of here and we will be part of this community. And um, we wanna give back any way that we can. And in our personal histories, there's, uh, there's a lot of that. And we know that there's the, the concern about the crowd control. The most that we can legally put on the boat is 150. We will not put any more than that on the boat because it risks the captain's license. Um, we're not a party boat, as Anthony had said. And uh, we want to continue the dialogue with Ms. Castro and with the Two Bridges. We're hoping to meet with the Two Bridges Neighborhood Alliance and meet with more community members because Ms. Castro introduced us over the uh, an email. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to opening up a relationship with the community that, you know, is our second home. So I'm hoping they, you know, accept us and understand that although others may have said otherwise, we are people of our truth. We are not a corporation. We're not a huge business. We're just a, two families that came together and want to run an operation safely, cleanly, correctly, and the community will be operating out of, under. So um, that's basically it. Okay. Well, do we want to move to community members first or did you? Okay. Um, so I know we do have one, at least one person here in person, um, Sally. Yeah. Sally Stroman, right? Right. Yeah, Sally Stroman. Oh. Here, I'll, I'll give her. I'll give her. Excuse me. Oh. Did you? Uh, if you just want to fill out, since you're in person, do you want to fill out speaker form? And we'll... Okay, go ahead, Sally. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Sally Stroman. I happen to live by your party boat. Uh, my building is very much impacted by this, as well as the community. There's a lot of noise. You only can control but so much. You can't be out there 24 hours a day. But I know when people come out there, party boats, they're very loud. I know you can't control that. They urinate on our property. They devastate on our property. Um, they, when they come parking in our community, they park in areas that they're not supposed to be parking in. I don't know if you have control over that. I doubt it very much. But I'm here to speak on behalf of my community that we are suffering with all the noise. I know we only could do but so much. I understand that. But since the party boat is near my building, we have young mothers who just had babies. We have elderly people. We have infirm people. And this noise is constantly, when your party boats are there, making noise, not the boats, but the people that's coming off your boat. I don't know how that can be controlled. I know we have called 311. I know that the police department has been down there to help control the crowds. We also know that, I don't know if you remember, on July 4th, someone came, I don't know if it was your boat or where, but I know they came off the pier. They drove down Water Street, smack into a a park killed four people, four people that was having a nice time in the park with their families on 4th of July. And it was a very sad moment for the community. I don't know what else that I can say. I think I said it all. I don't want to keep repeating myself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sally. Joe, can I respond to each one at the end? We'll wait till the end. We'll just do it at the same point. Yes. Yes. Um, Jay. Yeah. Jay. Is it Jay Reyes? Yes, my Reyes. Jose Reyes Sanchez. I live in Gouverneur Garden. Yeah, Jose, I'm sorry. I, I said I saw Jay. Jose. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I've lived in Gouverneur Gardens for the last 25 years. This is the first time that I'm terrified of what's happening, and I don't know if you you guys are responsible for that, but based on the last what I just said. It's very frightening to, to be around that area now. Before it was safe, you know, going around there in the evening, walking around, but now with so many crowds. And my concern about if you get your license of uh, liquor, how are you going to control people who are intoxicated? And what provisions do you have 
in the vessel itself, if you find somebody that is it's out, of, out of control prior to coming on board and also on board. So how, how, how can you control that? I know you can't control the map to delete your vessel. I understand that. But what provisions do you have in terms of security to make sure that you don't get people who are intoxicated or very inappropriate or, or to display very inappropriate behaviors? So I think we will address it at the end, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and let's just see. I think we, we have a number of yes, people yes. who have been Yeah. Yes. Do you have anyone online first? Yeah, we have like four people. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like first, I'm going to go ahead and call on Josie. Okay. I'm going to put the timer on as well. Yeah. Really long. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Josie. Go ahead, please. Hi. Uh, we have two people speaking uh, from my, uh, my part. Uh, I want to speak about, uh, just like Jose and uh, Sally had mentioned, I don't want to repeat, but the fact is that we have um, loads and loads of people going to the boat, standing around our vicinities, in front of our buildings, across the street, by the school, and they're all drinking alcohol before they go on your boats. Before they go on your boats, they want to get drunk. And they throw their liquor bottles on the floor because as we have been fighting with also bas Basketball City to try to get um, garbage cans in the corners of South Street and they still haven't done that. So that's another thing that we're uh, waiting on. But the fact is that that's one thing that they're doing. And then when they come off the boats, it's even more horrendous, okay? The vomiting, the pissing, the throwing of the garbage when they come off those boats, the arguing, the script. I mean, we get it at, at that hour of the night and people are trying to sleep, okay? We have a community. You say you want to join our community, then you know what? You need to be around when your people come off those boats and look how they behave. And so this is very ungodly behavior. And I would not um, even say you can get a liquor license. I would really, we'll, we'll petition you to the end. Okay, uh, uh, that's enough. I have someone else that wants to speak, please. Hello, my name is Nancy Rodriguez and I live right across um, the, the, the Gouvernia Slip, okay? And when they get off the boats at night, they come. They can't come through the construction street on on um, on Montgomery. So what they do is they come around Gouverneur Slip. I am a, a very light sleeper, so I look out the window and what do I see? People fornicating that just got off that that boat. Okay, getting their last minute drills and leaving <coughs> that they leave behind. Anyway, on top of that, Sunday mornings. When there's a boat going out, they all stand in the corner and they drink up their, their Julio alcohol and leave the bottles. I could collect bottles from every ship that leaves that, that, that bay because they leave the bottles behind before they get drunk, and <laughs> drunk to get into the boat. And I've often confronted them and they do not care. And also the parking in our neighborhood oh. is, is very sloppy. They park by pumps. As a matter of fact, I don't believe the police wants to come around to give anyone tickets because I guess they have made a deal with I don't know whom. And they park everywhere. They double park. They park by the pump, by every sign you can talk about. And uh, our community is a mess because of these party boats. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we're going to call. Hello, on my name is Rebecca. Okay. Hello? There we go. My name yeah. is Rebecca. I also live in Gouverneur Gardens. Not only do I hear them on the water, but I also hear them as they're walking behind the buildings and screaming and laughing, and I'm on the 17th floor, and I still can hear them. They also are throwing up behind the building. They don't care what garbage they leave behind. They are so upsetting, and I still want to know the 39 residents that signed that it would be okay, because I don't think any resident in this neighborhood 
wants them in the area when they're right across the street from a school, a brand new playground that just opened up and kids are in there to a certain time and you're giving them liquor license to go and do whatever they feel like doing it because they're rude and nasty and they don't care about the community. Maybe the owners of the party boat care about the community, but not the people who actually get on their boats because they don't live here. They don't care about the community because they leave the community and leave their garbage behind. So, yes, I'm, I'm going to repeat the 4th of July. The 4th of July, someone got off of something in that vicinity and came down Water Street and killed four innocent people that were just enjoying some time with their family. And we do not want a repeat of the 4th of July, even for children crossing the street. I've had my say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, I'm next Sam. we're going on to Sam, Sam Moskovich. Yes, thank you. Um, so my name's Sam Moskovich. I'm the board president of Gouverneur Gardens, which is right across the street from Pier 36. On behalf of the board and our 1,500 residents, many of whom showed up tonight, we strongly oppose this application. We didn't have enough time to gather signatures against this because we were notified at a very late date and there was absolutely no public notice presented to us, but be very assured, opposition to this application runs very deep in this community. And I mean the direct community, not the people that you mentioned that live 10 or 15 blocks away. Um, three months ago, this committee approved the liquor license for Basketball City. And many of us who testified at that meeting including the applicant, including myself, and many of the committee members at that time acknowledged that the negative quality of life mentioned over and over again at that meeting, including trash, late night loud music, public urination, dangerous traffic conditions, and yes, people having sex in public were primarily originating from the Pier 36 party boats. Just a few weeks after this committee voted to approve that license, these quality of life issues devolved into the ultimate loss for this community. When four of our community members were killed by a drunk driver from New Jersey who only drove to our community to continue drinking and partying at the same exact location, that's now asking for more opportunities to serve alcohol. Earlier tonight, we heard from a different applicant who didn't want to contribute to the existing problems of the community or create new ones. This application would do exactly that. Anyone from this community testifying about supposed community benefits of this application are lying to you and are lying to themselves. Everyone in this community and in this meeting knows that these party boats have been a scourge on this neighborhood for years. I am begging this committee to stand up for this community and oppose furthering our neighborhood as a regional destination for alcoholics who contribute nothing positive to our community or our local economy. There are no stipulations in the world that can make a yes vote palatable. Please vote no. And if I still have time, I can only hope and assume the applicants who showed up tonight are good, honest people and they sounded okay until what they started saying didn't match what's on the application. So the owner said daytime and sunset, but the application said midnight or 2 a.m. And going to midnight and 2 a.m. is a booze cruise. That's not a sunset cruise where somebody wants a beer or a glass of wine. This is a booze cruise and is not the type of business this community needs or Thanks. wants. And I urge them to withdraw this application. To, we, have a, we have several other people we have to really move on to. Okay, so Marilyn. So next we're gonna, Marilyn. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Marilyn Preserve. I'm also on the board at Gouverneur Gardens, and I have similar concerns. You, as Sam said, the applicant does seem a little different, but maybe not so much. Um, okay. You say it's 150 people on the boat. Yes, but if you run 10 or 12, it's an hour trip. If you run 10 or 12, you know, trips a day, that's, you know, a thousand or 900 people. That's a lot of people in our neighborhood. You can't, I don't know how they're going to get there and get out of the neighborhood. 
You can't get a cab in our neighborhood. If you're waiting for an Uber, you ride at the FDR drive. It's very dangerous. That's a lot of people. And if they've been drinking, that makes it only worse. I'll continue with what Rebecca said about the new park. It's very nice. We don't want it messed up. You didn't mention music or DJs on the boat. You had talked about that with every other applicant. So I'm questioning what that is. I do have concern about the boats running till midnight or either 2 a.m. Um, and would you just be serving beer and wine or would there also be hard liquor? Those are my concerns about the danger of people in the neighborhood. And as the other people said, you know, they can't get home, they spill over into our buildings and it's very disruptive for our quality of life. Thank you. Okay, next we're gonna move on to Edwin. Yes, how we're doing today. Um, my question exceeds the same as everyone else at this point. But you know what we what you fail to realize is one good thing that you're not understanding is that even though he has an occupation of, of 150 people on board, that's an additional 150 people that is in the works in the between here and there. Where those people are going to be, that's a surplus of 150 cars or the people that are running around extra on top of there. Maybe the captain is right. He does make, do a good job. Maybe he is. But at this location, it's not good enough. Maybe you want to move it to another pier or somewhere else. That's a great thing. But at this point, I faced literally right at the right in front of it. And two or three in the morning, you, these people say, oh, they're not. The captain only can do what he can on his boat. Anything off his boat, he don't have no control. So what you're saying is let the wolves run free from your control to the public and we suffer. That's what he's not telling us. Yes, he could control anything that happens on his boat. Is he guaranteeing us outside of that vessel? He's not. So at this point, what we're going to try to do is I'll say, please deny it. At least for this location, maybe he should apply for somewhere else that might be a little bit more forward for him. But at this point, it's totally useless, and I'm not going to keep on repeating the noise and everything else, but there is nothing else to say. It's too many people and such a short place. That's it. Can't say anything more at this point. Please deny the application at this point. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, Edwin. We are going to move on to Julian. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Um, I'm also on the board at Gouverneur Gardens, and I'm not going to, you know, hit a dead horse here, but um, the community is extremely concerned with the expansion of this party boat to our our area, um, and I think that you guys should deny it, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your brevity. Yeah, we'll let you, if we did it at 20, it would take you forever, so we'll Kind of do it in a group. One person. No. So we have one more person left, and it's listed as iPhone. Yeah. And then Susan. So I think the person we just promoted you, you're listed as iPhone. Uh, hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, allowing the community to uh, speak to this to this issue. Um, whether this boat is uh, classifying itself as a party boat or not, the fact remains that um, any time of day or night, because I've seen uh, people during the day getting drunk and displaying the same types of uh, behaviors that are not welcome in our, in our neighborhood, in our community. Um, by the way, I'm a resident nearby, um, near Pier 36 and also I live uh, within less than uh, maybe 1,200 feet of where those four people were uh, run over and, and killed and murdered by uh, pers that person that we were talking about on um, July 4th. Um, in any case, um, my name is Rebecca, and I'm just here basically to chime in along with 
um, other uh, fellow community members who are um, talking about uh, public safety, our quality of life, um, just um, in in your hands um, here, and um, it's it's I, I think it's in, unconscionable at this point to uh, consider approving yet another uh, tour boat, whether it's considered a so-called party boat or not. Um, we've talked about the capacity per uh, per tour, uh, how many tours are taking place uh, in one day. It has to be noted that um, people uh, drinking on board might bring the party back with them and might lead to further uh, not only unsavory behaviors, but uh, might cause dangerous uh, conditions uh, to uh, the patrons of the boat, as well as the community, whether it's in the park, the public park uh, that's neighboring the pier or uh, the, the, the families and uh, other community members that are neighboring the pier. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Okay. Please deny the application. Thank you. Okay, so that's Josie Tucker. Did Josie talk? Josie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Josie already spoke. Okay, okay Susan. Okay, um, I have one question first. I'm sorry, I wasn't here when you first started. Um, so, what is the home port? Home port's in Jersey City. So, you're not applying for a New York State liquor license, right? We are, yes. Because don't you usually apply at your home port? Uh, that's where we go birth overnight. We Pardon? operate. It's where we're operating out of New York. We're not operating out of New Jersey. There's no operations in New Jersey. It's, just it's, it's, it's a place. It's, it's a warrant. So, are you applying to the New York State liquor license with Pier 36 as your as your home port? Sure. Okay, so you are you are apparent applying for liquor license yes. here. So we we were not clear about that in the beginning. Um, so just I don't know how much context everybody has. Um, the city has created, and I want to say your organization, your company sounds like a very nice small company. Um, the city created a situation here that didn't exist 10 years ago. Um, they came to Community Board 3. They said, we're going to put in these tall ships. They're going to do education things. They're going to have tours for the community. Um, all these things that sounded delightful. Um, haven't seen that at all. Uh, they created, you know, that the planning is appalling. Uh, I have been getting complaints for many years about uh, the parking, the garbage, the outdoor bath, using the outside as a bathroom. Um, last weekend, um, and this none of this is their fault. <laughs> last weekend, they have vendors that use the parking lot of Basketball City but they sell, um, there was at least one person arrested for selling alcohol. You know, there's a lot of the vending is there to, for something else. There are drugs there. Um, so this has been going on. And as they say, nothing happens till someone dies. Um, July 4th put the community um, just in rage and in shock. EDC called an interagency meeting after that. Um, they did tell, say that they wanted boats to notify us whether they were applying to us or not. So that's why I didn't know you were like legitimately applying as opposed to um, notifying us. I will say as community engagement, there's probably been more community engagement for this application than any I've ever seen because the minute this happened, I knew what, you know, how upset people would be. And I immediately put him in touch with Trevor Holland to put him in touch with um, Tanya. And, you know, they had access to the whole um, community list there. So there's been a lot of conversations. I've not been part of them, but there's been, you know, a lot of conversations um, going on. It's, it's the situation down there. Um, I'm not saying anything for or against this license. I'm just saying, uh, what the situation was or has been. And uh, it's just the city has created something that's just untenable. Um, and, you know, this is, again, nothing to do with their application. Uh, the person that came in from New Jersey was drunk. 
the owner of the boat, he tried to go on, did absolutely the right thing. They refused to let him go on the boat because he was drunk. Unfortunately, nobody is charged with um, finding out how this guy is getting home. And, you know, he got in his truck and you know what happened. That's all I have to say. Okay. That's Susan, a clarifying question. Or do we know the other boats that are there that are serving alcohol? Where are they licensed? None of them have ever, this is the first right. vessel application we've ever had. Um, I actually called Community Board One and got, you know, information on their stipulations and everything. Otherwise, we had no clue. This is the first time we've ever had um, a vessel come to us for a license. So Community Board One does have one? They haven't had license? one. They do, Since but they haven't had one for a while. But what they, about CB6 with this guy? I, I didn't. You know, I didn't go up there. Their neighborhood is very different. This is right in a residential neighborhood with no place to park, no way to get there, no way to get home. Um, you know, and again, I, you know, it's not these people that are doing this. Um, it's the city that has created uh, the situation down there. Thank you. Okay. So we'll. Go ahead and give you a chance to respond to some of the so things. So I can respond to this. July 4th was a tragic, horrible incident that will have reverberations in this community for many, many years. Now, 10 people spoke, and most people spoke about party boat, and there was a lot of S's, a lot of plural boats. I think there might be a little bit of a mischaracterization here that they have one small tour boat. The last speaker, Rebecca, did say it might be a tour boat, which it is a tour boat. So I think there's a mischaracterization here. And I think they weren't even here July 4th. Terrible, tragic incident. Susan indicated the situation there is very less than ideal. This is not, the onus is not on them for that particular scenario. So, I mean, it was overwhelming. Obviously, 10 people spoke. The community has uh, significant sentiments on this application. But I think they're being mischaracterized, and I think some people may think that they're already part of what's transpiring there when they're not. So I just wanted to clarify that. And Keith, you might want to add to this. Yeah, it's up to you. Yeah, just quick and briefly, there was one person who said that you know we applied for 2 a.m. that this is going to be a booze cruise. Um, yes, it's in the application as an option, but I put it in there because that's what you can apply for. If there was somebody who wanted to charter our vessel to go around the harbor. Sure. If it's something that's going to be of concern, um, I'm willing to let that go because, again, primarily my business is during the daytime. Um, one hour tours to the Statue of Liberty and back. Um, I don't want to be put into this category that I'm going to be sailing all night and I'm willing to, you know, change that. That was the only reason that that was in there is because it was an option to do that. Um, if any family wanted to charter a boat, to go see the sites, yeah, I'll do that. I, I don't know how else to defend myself besides saying that that's what it is. I don't, I, I don't want to be perceived as a liar or a storyteller. Um, so I, I would try to prove that any way I can as a stranger. Um, as far as when I said um, can't control people when they get off the boat, um, when I said that it was more of like other operations, I guess I, I meant in that sense, not so, for so the people, it's the operation. I can't control other operators. There's several other companies there. I can't speak for them or what they do. I just can only speak for myself and what I'm trying to do. Um, I, I don't think people are going to be getting boozed up, falling over themselves in an hour in a statue of liberty back. Uh, again, it's, it's, I don't know how else to prove that. Um, it's uh, anytime if we did have a late night charter where it's like late night, I mean like eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night time because somebody wants to see the, the, the skyline or during the daytime, um, if there was an appropriate action in order to make sure that there was somebody there to make sure people were okay to get on or off the boat, uh, I would do so. I'm a new business owner. I've been a captain for a long time, but yes, I am a new business owner and I will sure I'll make mistakes along the way. But I will try to correct them. Um, we're the, I want to run tours. Whether that's the truth or not, we're not a party boat. I'm not looking to get into the loose cruise industry. I want to go home at night. 
that's what I want to do. You know, I, I got a, I got a little girl I want to get home to. My daughter, and not daughter, but I'm just saying it's like that's what I want to do. I'm not trying to. Uh, that's that's it. So uh, I'll put an answer. I have, a, yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So you said uh, Susan noted your you know you're speaking to residents, speaking to Trevor uh, and other folks. Can you? Tell us about your conversations with those folks and anything that might have come out of the, that. Uh, yeah, we spoke with Trevor. Trevor actually was able to take a, we were on the boat. We invited yeah. him to come on the boat. He actually took a picture of the boat from the water. Um, he, uh, we, we, we spoke about, you know, who we are, uh, that we want to be part of the community. Uh, he spoke about how, you know, the other operators don't, there's no back and forth. There's no communication. We came to you. I mean, that's the difference. You're seeing our faces. We're here. It's the bottom line. Um, there are boats there. You know, we had the discussion about that. Uh, Mr. Hahn brought up the fact that, you know, he wanted participation in, you know, cleaning up the pier. Or we're willing to plant the plants in those planters that's there. Um, cleaning up the bathrooms. You know, we're there every day. We can participate in the schedule for that. Because we, we came to you because we want to be part of the community. Then, uh, so that was that conversation. It was very positive. And then uh, we spoke again the next day. At first, he was going to try to meet us at the pier, but then he got stuck in traffic. So he said he would call or email us if, if he had another question for us. Um, so then he reached out to Ms. Castro, Tanya, and had a little conversation with her. And it was a very positive conversation, so much so that, you know, she asked me to recap our conversation, mine and hers, and send it to her so that she can send it out. So just one of the, I, I don't think she reached out to Governor's Lock Gardens. I mean, I would like to talk to them personally. Uh, Two Bridges Neighborhood Alliance, the uh, Alliance of the Waterfront Residents. Um, it was a very positive conversation. Um, she was, you know, impressed that, you know, we actually came to this community and showed her face, even knowing the, the terrible tragedy that happened. Um, and we're doing so because we don't want to be categorized like that. We were we're operating on the 4th of July. We didn't start sailing until last month. We were we were getting still preparation. We didn't that we were, I wish I was sailing on the 4th so I could go see the fireworks on my boat. And we weren't. We weren't just, I'm not to, we're, we're not a, a corporation. We have kids we want to get home to. Nobody wants to work the two eight. Uh, as far as being part of the community, no, I don't live in the community. And the point I was trying to make was that I have a tool here to utilize that if anybody in the community wanted to come and use it, yeah, come aboard and use it. That's that's what I meant by that. Not that I live there, I don't, you know, it's but I have something that could be utilized and I put forward where maybe Maybe they had a lot of operators say they would do something. I had no idea, and they didn't. Turning but. a negative into a positive. Um, and I, you know, that's, that's what I meant by that. We came here, to be honest. I think that has to mean something. You know. So um, I would like to emphasize, it wasn't the boat, any boat that did something wrong in July 4th. They did absolutely the right thing. They refused to let the person on the boat because he was drunk. The issue is that drunk people come here because there are party boats, but you, I'm not saying they're a party boat. I'm just saying it's a situation that has created, that the city has created. I do want to also say that um, Clint and I did discuss with Trevor uh, possible stipulations after their meeting. Oh, great. I'm willing to be flexible. I am. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I think uh, the issue is uh, within the community, people hear boats. And people, community see people, crowds of people walking towards the people. And they have a misconception or a conception that it is a party boat. The community is very concerned about the community. I understand where you're coming from. You're a businessman. I understand all that. And I'm quite sure you understand our concerns too. I understand there's only certain, you only can control what you can control, and the community can control what they can control. 
And how I look at it, we have to have some concession of how we can deal with this. And I don't know what the answer is. And I don't think anyone knows what the answer is. So maybe we have to come out with some ideas of how to work together to get this situation under control. Because it's going to get worse. It's not going to get better. Trust me. And you're going to have a situation in the community fired up about, I'm not saying your book, I'm just making a general, because you're not the only one, a general statement. And I don't want to get that far where people will get hurt, that have guns or whatever. I'm very concerned about that. Thank That's you. what I have to say. Thank you, Sally. So I have to deny, I would like for you to take into consideration that I'm saying no, but I understand where you're coming from and I understand that you know where I'm coming from. Yes. I'm trying to make some sense. Yes, thank you for, you're welcome. for that. Um, so my question for you is, and I don't, I don't know if you have the answer. Um, where, where do you, where are your, I don't know if you know, where are your customers coming from? The on, online, buy it from TripAdvisor. Yeah, TV. so they're not, they're not in any kind they're of, coming off the F train. But I mean, they're not in any kind of organized, you don't have, you're not in conjunction with a tour bus that is dropping not off there on Water Street or anything we, else. We so you're just, you're registering online and they're coming from however they get there. It's the train, cab, bus, Uber, private cars, whatever. You're not, you have no other connection with how they're getting there, I guess that's my question. Occasionally there'll be a tour group from Greece or Belgium or Canada and we know they're coming. And that's why I have a Dante goal. You know, yeah. that's but I mean, in general, it's not like a setup. No, you can see them where. coming in waves when the F train comes and then they go back to the F train or the M train and they go back to the M train or they, we send them walking down towards, um, you know, South Street Seaport, the, the Brooklyn Bridge turn, there's a 9-11 Memorial. So mostly when they're getting off the boat, they're going, you know, towards Pier 35, walking under the FDR Drive and going up towards uh, the 9-11 Memorial. That's not so. Um, I'm sorry. That's not so. Well, no, but Sal, we, it's, we need to have our discussion with yeah, the yeah, applicant yeah. now, so. Um, so, you're already operating, correct? Yes. With your tours. Mm -hmm. We work some weekends, yes. Does anyone else have any questions or comments too at this point? I'm thinking through some things, but. Yeah, um, so I um, used to work in East River Park, just north of there as doing community outreach, actually, working to get um, public amenities and a working waterfront and tourism. But then, uh, as Susan described very well, this became a mess uh, with the city. I, I had actually gotten several community groups and housing, gotten students out on some of those boats when it first started, and then it became party boats and not um, tour boats. Uh, which is very disappointing. I I kind of like that you're coming to us at the community board because it gives us a contact, which we don't have with any of the other boats. And uh, Doc NYC, I, I've made complaints uh, to 311 and then passed them on to Susan about the their management of the people on Pier 30 the backside of Pier 36 because essentially, especially with all the construction, that's our pathway, that's our greenway right now is all we have along the waterfront. Um, but for specific questions, you would never be serving alcohol. It's only on while you're on people on the tour. It's on not like a parked boat. No. no. With people coming oh, there. Um, and then, yeah, the 2 a.m. was also a concern for me for when you have a charter, because then that does sound more like a party boat than a tour boat. I yeah. think what he was referring to when he was going to that is like, for example, we can have a group of people that want to charter the boat for New Year's Eve. Right. 
we will have somebody. So that's right. But that's party not, party. not, yeah, but that's different than, I've seen than them, selling I've seen it online as a party book. But it is. Um, I think that's it's, it's, uh, oh, I guess the point is until you're closing it, you know, yeah. you know, it's just not my primary business. I guess that's really what it is. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Yeah. If I can show people a good time and they want to prep, they want to charter, uh, it's a venue. That's how I've always looked at it. I understand the, the issues of community. I just, I, I guess that's what it is. But, you know, ordinarily you're going to statue with it. People don't go to the statue to get drunk. People charter a boat on New Year's Eve or have a party, they are very likely to be getting drunk. This is two totally different types of businesses or method of operation. And then we care like 85 to 90% of the business is going to be the tourist who just wants the opportunity uh, to possibly have that other option, which wouldn't be often at all. So I'm going to say, as far as receiving complaints, you're going to be at that type of business is different mm -hmm. than, than going to Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And this is even part of the conversations we've had with residents after you spoke to them. Some of them see going, you know, talk about going to the Statue of Liberty as a very different kind of boat than a charter boat that's uh, having a party on a charter boat. I'm just telling the reality that residents see it differently mm -hmm. because they live there and they see what happens. If you don't want us to sail past midnight, I mean, I'm, I, I, yeah, it's something that's a concern if they're- Well, I think, so what my concern is, and sure, 2 a.m. Is, is a red flag, but a lot of the party boats, existing party boats, I think, are earlier than midnight. They're day parties. They're day parties, they're afternoon parties, they're like early evening party boats that are coming in. Maybe they're coming back in a dock at 10 p.m. and they're coming back. So I'm, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm fine with 2 a.m., but I'm less concerned a little bit about the hours than just the nature of, like, even if you're chartering a party cruise during the afternoon, that's just as much of a, can be as just as much of a problem as something late at night. So for me, it's not as much about the hours, but it's also just what you're, adding to the existing problems. The other thing that I'm trying to reconcile, and I was thinking about this beforehand, before the meeting when I was preparing for this, in some ways, if we kind of have to start doing this, like we talk about saturation of bars and restaurants, or you know, bars and liquor licenses in certain areas, that just adding one more is just pushing it over the edge and causing extra problems. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about many times, even if someone's coming in, it looks like they're gonna be a great operator. It's still adding another license to that area and bringing more people to that area, which makes the problem worse. And I'm not saying it's your people are gonna be a problem, but in some points, it's just like what some of the residents talk about, it's the sheer number of people coming in some points, even if they're not drunk just the sheer number of people is overwhelming that neighborhood, which is something I'm trying to reconcile in my head. I don't know if anyone else. I get, it. I get what you're saying. I understand. But on the other side of the coin, I have to look at it as this is something we can control. We can put stipulations on you that if you would agree to, where right now we have no control over the party buttons that are down there. They're not registered here. They're not, they never came to us. They're registered in New Jersey or wherever else they're, they're, they're licensed from. So we have no control or say over them. They're here docking and the parties are going on. We really have no control over them. I think Dock NYC probably does in some way because they control the, the dock, right? They're the only control, but even that, I but it's assume, is, is complaint driven. Um, and, you know, there's no process for it. So, I mean, but my, but the other, on the other side of the coin is, you know, if we deny you and the state denies you, you're still going to continue operating, I'm assuming. So it's still going to be that same number of people coming and going. So I 
I don't know that necessarily adding liquor license to your tour is going to drastically increase the number of people you're having coming and going from your boat. So if, if we're just specifically talking about the number of people coming and going, I don't know, I'm, I don't know if the liquor license is going to change that. Uh, first, I suggest that maybe you want to talk about the kinds of stipulations we discussed. With well, but some of them, I think most of them, some of the things now that we're hearing what they're actually like as short as it's going to be, some of the things that other community boards have put in place is that, you know, you would stop serving alcohol 45 minutes before you return to dock. Your tours are only an hour or so. That's not, I don't know that that's even possible. I, you know, that means you're serving alcohol for 10 minutes or something. Most is that they're not like, coming on the boat to get drunk. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. But that's what I mean. Like a lot of the limits that some other community boards have put on some of the boats is things like that. You know, no stop serving alcohol an hour and 45 minutes before the, return, the boat returns to, to the dock. That, that's for a three hour cruise or something. That's not, that's not something that's applicable to you because as I said, by the time you leave, you serve alcohol for 15 minutes and then you're going to be coming back to dock. So I don't know that that's something we could, I don't know that we would agree to it. And I don't know that it's necessarily fair for us to put that on you. It's a, the whole tour is an hour? Well, how, how long are your tours? If from, from the time you leave dock, Statue of Liberty and back, how long is that? They, say, they, they, they come out to, as soon as you leave dock, 45 minutes. The whole because, so yeah, how, is, how is important, how important it is it to you to serve alcohol for that short amount of time? You know, they come on as a rush. To be quite honest with you, it would bring up revenue for us. You know, they what? It, it would bring up our, you know, sales. They, they come on as people come on and they, they want to so no. they, they want to have a beer and with their family. And we talked about this, like um, it's, it's mostly beer, wine, and very limited alcohol. Like they said, twenty percent if that. That's. I mean, one thing I kind of equated is to like it's different because it's not, but like the statue there. I mean, the Staten Island Ferry has a bar. The IKEA Ferry has a bar. I mean, I, I equate it to more something like that. I think is what you're trying to do rather than NYC Ferry or the bar. NYC Ferry is the, the old ferry is the Yeah, everybody does. And yes, it would bring up more sales and it would help us out financially, to be quite honest. So the other thing I heard them mention a little that I thought was very good. Um, you talked about your conversations with the tenants about getting literally getting involved with the community and cleaning up some that sort of thing. And you know, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit more. Because nobody's doing that now. None of the boats are contributing. I gotta prove young guys and if you want this to pitch in some way to you know spend the day to the conversation I had with Trevor uh, was that um, to reiterate what Keith was saying is that you know we're there, we're there every day. So there'll be a rotational schedule for the bathrooms that's going to be put at the pools. So we'll rotate in on that schedule because you know there's a little window of time between the tours. We have staff that shows up just before the tour. We're there at the pier. You know, there's those 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 things, the planters that have nothing in it. I mean, I. I I like gardening. Uh, I don't know really, the there. The idea of the, the deck to captain program to reach out to, you know, kids, kids in the neighborhood that, you know, just college is something they want to do. Uh, we can mentor them. I mean, we want to do that. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Boy Scout leader. Well, the Girl Scouts. And now my daughter is an Eagle Scout. I go, every week I deal with service issues. We can bring them, I had a troop of baby scouts. We can bring them down here and do some sort of. They need the they need the service hours. So if there's a project that Ms. Castro or the people at Governor's Island, who I don't think we reached out to those people. We mean Governor's Island. Governor's 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 yeah, Governor's I mean we spoke to the the to talk to Ms. Castro and we did send out a, a Zoom meeting and we would like to reach out to the community. So. Um, there was that using local caterers, you know, we had a wedding, maybe. So, I know right now in construction, it's really a mess down there, and there's...
there is, is there, I don't know, I don't, that's just musing out loud, but I was just trying to think, is there any way that you can direct your, your uh, customers to enter a certain, I, I don't, I'm just trying to think of anything that could alleviate. There's one entrance in here that is that we can show. And that's, I wouldn't actually walk over there and see if we get in and out of that. But it, there should be two ways to go around both sides once that's open. Marsha came a long way with that project. You know, I've been working with her over the last, what, year and a half with, you know, movement of people. There's been times where we have to close off the entrance at 36. It was great, like, how everybody worked together. She had the construction workers help. I put two employees out there, and we were able to guide the people through all the way through and around and make sure they came back out again. Um, you know, that construction will end. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, well, um, as far as the volunteering, if there is, I, we're, we're very busy. We do. It's an everyday opportunity, maintenance, running, and all that stuff. But if there is something that wants to be put in place, uh, scheduling wise, like you would say, hey, we need five guys, we need something going on in this state, you give us a date or something like that, you know, we go right around and schedule to, to, to help if that's what you're asking to do. I wasn't thinking of a what's one time thing, I was thinking of a, you know, well, an ongoing effort with with the community and it would be you know the residents that live there that would you know really that already are, are dealing with the problems that would be the ones to say there was somebody that spoke with once at the henry street settlement we'd like to partner with them and like what you said with the educational cruises i mean a big part of my life has been training tour guides riding tours educating the youth um training young people that would never think to become a tour guide i mean it's a real job they make real money, but they don't know that they can do it. They think it's too hard. I spent my life in service. We were blessed with this one opportunity. This vote came to us, at, you know, and unbelievably, it was like a fixer up. And he was able to put up his heart and energy into it and, you know, make it as beautiful as it looks now. So uh, we need to give back for what we got. I mean, that's why we're coming to you. I mean, yeah, I guess we can go somewhere else well, and find a license, but well, we're so, here. But, but so, we want to be here. I don't, know, I don't know if Susan knows the answer, or maybe Anthony, you know the answer, but if if we were to deny them and the New York State denies them, could they go to Jersey where they're docked and get a vessel license and still come to Pier 36? I, I wouldn't work on that license. I don't do New Jersey, but it's what all the other boats That's what I mean. That's what I mean. So, that's what I mean. so, so just, you know, briefly, I just think they're being two things mischaracterized and miscast in a sense. Then they're being held accountable for this tremendous issue. And then they're, they're new. That's just my opinion. just being pragmatic. Well, but what I'm, but well, what I'm saying is, yes, you could, that could be something if we deny you. I'm not saying you should, but I'm just, but also, and again, I'm, separating them out from the party votes. I thoroughly agree or I understand that that's not your intent. And I understand you were proposing a charter just for something else if someone ever wanted to charter the vote. I, but I think what I'm, but my concern is even if you are amazing operators, even if, you know, let's just say you don't even serve alcohol, how, and how, that, that's what they're, how many tours are you planning on a day? If you're going to be, I think it was, what were your hours, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m.? Like, how many tours are you playing? Like, we're pretty new. So, you know, if we were to run a maximum tour, it would probably end up be four or five. Four or five total for the day. So it's not going to be every 45 minutes. Well, no, it is. It's, 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 no, it's just the crew needs a break. They so, have to, yeah. You know, and they have to board and on board and just things that have to be done. So the eight, somebody mentioned, you know, 10 days. It's not, it, it's not going to, that's, yeah. that was my, that was my thought on this. It's not, you know, because I'm just trying to figure out, as I said, I'm, I'm looking at this like, I'm because it's new, we're trying to figure out how we treat other licenses. And, you know, there are places where, you know, we have, it's a problem block. And we have this great business that has been operating somewhere else in our community board and everyone loves them. But then they want to come to this block that is just out of control. And it's a tough call because even if they're great operators, again, and like in your case, let's just say, you know, even if you're not 
let's just say you don't sell alcohol in it, but then it's still, now we can't stop you from operating, but I'm just trying to reconcile adding the number of people. But I think it's different than uh, a bar because they can go to another block. They can go someplace else. We, you know, we say often we would support no, you. No, that is true. Yeah, else. They have them. only one this place. This is the only go. dock you can and go if to. If you deny them the license <laughs> here, they can get licensed at a different port and yeah. come here. Yes. <laughs> I, so, so I know that's, very that's what I was bringing up earlier. Uh, is that, brick and mortar so is there a benefit to us, you know, working with them? And I'm trying. I mean, now I've, I'm. I had ideas in my mind for what the situation was going to be, but I just don't know that they work for them. I think there's only two tour operators, right? It's also one of the first one around during the daytime. And, uh, Because you know. honestly, I'm not super concerned about what's going to happen on your boat. It's, it sounds like, you know, it's a tour that, It's, it's, you know, and I say total an hour to hour and a half between the time they pull off and the time they're getting back off. You know, you see, if there's anybody who wants to be a representative and come down and take a look at what the operation's like, they're more than welcome to come forward. But I'm not, like, they're not going to be on there. They're not, they're not going for white parties. They're not going, they're not going to be drinking for hours on, on your cruise, even if, you know, I know people can drink a lot in an hour and a half, but I'm just... But I'm just thinking like, I'm not, it's, I'm trying to separate your, what your operations are, but even if you're the best operators, what your impact on the community is and trying to come up with something that can make them work together. Do you have any idea of like how many targeted events you might do a month? You know, I thought about that earlier because you brought up about like, because you mentioned somebody earlier about like per month, per year, you know, like per year. I mean, I chalked it up to if I got, at most, if I got 20 a year for the entire year, I think that would be a lot to be quite. It's not, you You can see the pictures of the boat. Yeah. It's not really set up. I mean, yeah, I have, I have a platform to do something here, but uh, you compare it to other boats, I mean, she's, it's not, it just doesn't look like that. I mean, it's, uh, can I do it? Yeah. If I got some, sure. During the summer months, I think it would probably be a little bit more if somebody wanted to charter something. And Charter is renting out the whole boat. Yeah, renting the boat out for a private time. party and they want to do something. But would, those, want, would yeah. those charters be, so again, would they, would, you know, your tour, would they be chartering a tour out of the statue and moving it back, or would this be a three or four hour charter? If they, uh, for a charter, if they wanted a party of some sort, like a birthday, or if they wanted to go out for anything. <laughs> Um, so that's where the stipulations come in for the charge. Yeah, that's where some of the, you know, if they want yeah. drinking would have to end by an hour or 45 minutes before they're back at four or something. I, I want to say, you know, I, I've been on so many boats where they break a boat off. Um, I put so much work into it that it's pro it's my own due diligence to filter out whoever the person in charge is. I was like, yeah, okay, you can take my boat, you can do this. Don't break my boat. You know, and it's just like, you start doing something erratic, we're going right back to the pier, I'm calling the NYP and we're getting this resolved immediately. And you're not going to come back to my business ever again either. So it's like, I'm not just throwing anybody on this way, oh yeah, this, uh, what is going to do? You know, I, I want to make money at the same time, but I also want to protect my asset. Um, but still, I mean, you don't, you don't know. Someone... And the problem is, because that's the thing, someone could charter your boat and they could be lovely people when they're talking and then they get on your boat and they turn into a disaster. Yeah, you can't. I mean, and I'm not saying that, you know, you have no control over that. You can vet them the best you can, but once they're there and the party starts, that's it's hard for you to control it. Yes, you can stop it and take them back, but I mean, so that's what we're just trying to reconcile. I'm trying to reconcile at least something. The other, earlier you said about um, 30 chairs and tables. The one thing that you don't know is that the whole one level is all the wraparound bench. So it's just an aisle to walk and an aisle to sit, which makes it, you know, ideal for sightseeing. It's not like just okay. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We discussed it as much no, as No, I know. There's I, I don't want to take a straw poll. If you want to, guys, talk about it. 
I'm not. I'm already in this position where I'm at. Where I don't have a. We license. have to go to that. Well, oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, no. Right. So the other option is something I'm kind of baiting out. So, and I don't know if it would help, but it seems like every we didn't hear from anyone. I think everyone that we heard in opposition was from Gouverneur Gardens, which you said you haven't met with. No, I spoke with Ms. Castro and Mr. Um, yeah, so, and we've heard no one from, from their organizations has been here. They, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they're supporting you, but they're not here in opposition. And I think if they were in opposition, someone would be here. I don't know if, it's, if it would help if you were to meet with the people from Gouverneur Gardens. I don't know if that would help, if that would help. So Mr. Moskowitz said he would never approve this. He, he's ahead. He, um, he was the sixth speaker. You should offer to meet with people anyway. Yeah. They, they don't they have have to, but I'm yeah. conscious of the yeah. time also. And, you know, it's going to be, and it perhaps could be an exercise of futility, but you guys, you glad to meet with them. I mean, but and I'm not, I'm not. Well, that, that's, 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 where that's, I, where I, that's where I was going with that, is if you wanted to withdraw, and have a chance to, I mean, if you're saying, if you are in a rush and you're not, if you want to withdraw, you can come back. I mean, you could reach out to the Gouverneur Gardens community. It seems like your talks with the other communities seem to have had some effect because like I said, they're they're active and they're not here complaining. Because it doesn't affect this. They are the other end of the state. They're more removed from the yeah. fear, so to say. Yes, they are. Uh, excuse me, sir. You're you're here. you're one of the two people that have been. Uh, do you have any other questions for? I I well, did you take I'd like to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excuse yeah. me, you're still here. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying it's not right. You're not sharing the meeting. No. Because uh, <laughs> you said nobody was here, but he yes. Yeah. Well, no, but you know, but you're, 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 you're from the other community. We actually didn't answer this question. Yes, we have to control the toxic community. Yeah. So he's going to have security. You know, one of the huge tenets of ABC laws, you can't sell to visibly intoxicated people. It's oh, 21, that's the next one. That's, so, that's how the tragedy happened. It was because he was refused yeah. and he was drunk. And he was refused. But I think, you know, my point is that no one from other, because they're both from the same, they're both from Google uh, Gardens. And so is almost all the people. Again, I don't, I can't speak for them. I don't know if it would make any difference. I don't know if they would even talk to you. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to come up with some kind of. I'm here. You are. And we, we, we heard from you. Um, I don't know. What does anyone else, does anyone else have any other thoughts? I'm, I'm really kind of lost with this. It's something different, but. Can we request a stipulate? You know, you have to let, yeah. let them. We, we, that was just brought up. Just, they're, they're either going to vote or they're going to vote yeah. or they're deciding now. Well, I guess that's a question. Before we do that, you were talking about, you know, holding over to next month. Is that something you, because if you're going to do that, we don't need to continue the discussion. Right. right. I think what we're discussing, keep on getting involved in this, I think um, the feelings are where they are, and I think we're going to be at the same place in a month. This is my particular opinion. But obviously, you know, they want to do additional I outreach. I don't necessarily disagree with you on that. So that's change some minds. But 10 people spoke against. So what's the, if we get five to change and agree with them, the other five will still be vehemently against this or any problem by that. In any other case, whatever, we will still reach out to the people. In, in. Yeah, my, my attitude so doesn't change either way. Like if someone, and that's a, if and someone, the other thing that yeah. I'm trying to think, it sounds like you're going to get even, let's just say you're, we deny you and you choose not to go to the SLA. You're going to continue operating, so that same number of people are going to be coming and going. That's a yeah. way to show that we mean what we're saying is we'll reach out to them. And if anybody wants to come down and come that's that's in this meeting right now, and they want to come down to the vote and go do something, it, right? Would you consider? Want. And I, I don't know if this also would help, but would you consider doing a beer and wine license instead of a full liquor license? I'm open to that. Yeah, I mean, we said earlier, 85% of beer and wine, so it's obviously by an option that they agree to that. So they basically reduce their hours and they reduce the type of license they would apply for. I mean, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. Because no. that, I mean, that is a gesture showing, you know, a, the party votes aren't going for beer and wine. 
well, there's no bottle service or anything. If anybody had some concern of that, like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, selling bottles out of buckets and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not what I'm trying to strive for here. I mean, I don't know if you need to do a straw poll. What, what are the other, what's everyone else thinking on this side? I, I thought the exact same thing here in wine. Maybe give them the later hours in ex like in exchange for the beer and taking a beer in wine. That's it. I'm for creating compromise and doing stipulations. That sounds reasonable. Uh, I think we're going to have a larger conversation in the full board. A lot of a lot of folks came out, so I don't yeah. expect this to be the end of the conversation. No, thank you. But I, you know, do want to present something to the board you know, that is reasonable and does take into account the reality of the situation down there, you know, in, in regard to regulations and people docking there without our say yeah. so and whatnot. So uh, I think that's a reasonable measure. We're late hours, they want to take it down a notch, with the, with the booze, come back and, you know, give us some time, come back. Yeah, I, I think two o'clock is a problem because there's a lot of people living there. Gouverneur Gardens is how many buildings? Plus all the other buildings. Yeah. How many? Six. Six, Six huge buildings. Yeah. Yeah. And they're right there. And I mean, the whole. So I think yeah. I, even if they're not drinking, it's still it's a problem. Just, it's just and the number of people. So I, I think two o'clock, two o'clock is a problem. Um, I think if even if there, I agree. Even if there's, even if again, if there's no alcohol, just just right, that number of people coming off, I feel like is a little late. But you can only control. You can only put stipulations if they're serving alcohol. If they're not oh, serving alcohol. Yeah. There's no stipulations. They can do whatever they want. So they can be there too. Yeah. The other thing is, if if you are going to approve a certain number of charters, I would say no drinking. You know, within 45 no, minutes yeah. of coming if back, you charter, no, music, tour, no music, 45 time, minutes for coming back. We have to do the uh, for that. So it would lessen the impact. And I would put in to, um, to, to work with the residents down there on um, cleanup and, you know, and activities to improve the area. Because that would be a benefit to them. What about midnight? That way they could still get like weddings. Yeah, yeah, midnight's all right. Yeah. No, I mean I think I think midnight, that's what they were originally asking for, or they're primarily asking for. Two is the exception. Yeah. Can you give them like beers on 2 a.m.? Like one off? Is that that's something we can stipulate? Because I do kind of understand that they want to for something like New Year's Eve, because yeah. New Year's 12 midnight for New Year's Eve. Party. They should do it from a different dock. They, do it, they, from, that's they true. do it from the that's west true. side yeah. and not bothering anybody. Yeah, that's true. You know, this is where people live. I... And I would say again, it's uh, add to it as an equity thing. It's all subsidized housing out there. Okay. You know, I don't see the, you know, they're doing this at the extent of things. Would that be something you'd be amenable to? You want to just re a recap? Well, be, yeah, because we've been back and forth a lot. Um, if it would be beer and wine with 12, with no later than 12 o'clock, even for charters. Yeah, I could do it. I could, I, I could, I'll compromise with that. Yeah, I could do that. And then we would, next discussion would be the number of charters you're planning for the year. And then there would obviously, because they would be a different operation than your normal tours, so there'd have to be some other stipulations on those. Um, well, this is what we've heard from the other community boards that have dealt with the party buses is things, or party boats, not party buses. Um, things like no serving, you know, stopping alcohol service 45 minutes or an hour before returning to dock so that, you know, they're not drinking the whole time. Oh, yeah. Do you want them to do um, like You know, close the bar early? Like yeah, cl closing the bar at, you know, 45 minutes before dock, um, cutting, you, music. cutting the music. You know, no, no closer than 500 feet from the dock. 
Um, those are the two. Seems those like are, that's already a rule anyway. They supposed to shut the music in between the bridges. That's that's the rule that it's what operators have. Yeah, the doc the already has that. That's like not something we've seen in the other time. Between between the bridges. By the bridge. Yeah, yeah once you the when, you're, when you're approaching, it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't know that. Um, uh, I mean, I get it. I, I know people aren't going to be happy about this, but again, you could they could get a license somewhere else and not have any of these, no, not no. agree to any of these things, and go back. It can be a problem. So I'm trying to come up with a compromise here that can work for everyone. Okay, it sounds like we're all kind of in agreement to move toward that kind of resolution. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna focus on the screen. Okay. Yeah. I think you're gonna just have to do a word document. I mean, word doc. Well, put that put the stipulations up. But it's gonna be because most of a lot of those aren't gonna apply. So I can open up the word doc. Yeah, but I mean, I can format format it later. Just, yeah, don't want to format it. Just but um, I can do that on the screen. So here's. I'm going to put this on the screen. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just going to put the stipulations in like a bullet point for now. And yeah, then, that's fine. And then I'll reformat. I'll, 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 or I can do that later too or something. Um, yeah, so it's going to be. So it'll be a beer and wine license for a commercial tour vessel, I think was what you were categorizing, commercial tour vessel. It's only showing half the screen. Oh, sorry about that. All right, uh, so uh, we'll put the additional stuff up there. I can only do one at a time. All right, so let's, you wanna do this one first? Yeah. No more. Yeah. We'll go through those and then pull out the ones that apply, and then we'll add the new ones below. Okay. Okay. So, commercial core vessel, um, ten a.m. to twelve a.m. all days. The outdoor dining beer and cider, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wine, beer, and cider. Okay. The outdoor dining doesn't apply, obviously. Um, so you said for security, you would have one ground security that's assisting patrons on and off board. Yes. Okay. Would you have anyone else? So that person is basically going to be the dock. Is there someone else? Could you have, like, as you dock, could then someone, could your staff from the boat come off to kind of, I don't say chase people away, but Ensure that people are leaving in an orderly fashion. Is that? Well, 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 I mean, I'm not. I don't know what you know, is in your. Yeah, I don't know. That, that, pier, in your that pier is huge. Yeah. yeah. And even if you attempt it, I just I'm being honest. Uh, that's, you, I, you I, lose. I, you lose people in in the crowd. With the other. Yeah. yeah. With every, you you yeah. couldn't even. Yeah. So. This isn't like a single file. No, I know. It's not like you're docking in one little place and they're going to come off and they can just direct them that way. And they have all the vendors out there. It's, so, you yeah. know, I, I still say that I'm going to be responsible. No, I, I can't. Yeah. I don't want to. We wouldn't want to. Oh, yeah. The point. Well, no, definitely that. But I just was, I was trying to come up if there was a way that, like, okay, they come off the boat, but you could have your staff direct them a different, but I don't, I just, I don't think that's possible. It's not. So I guess we'll leave it at that. The one security guard 
to assist patrons on and off board. And in orderly, I mean, we could say in orderly fashion, it's going to be ordered. I don't know if that's necessary. Um, sound for three doesn't apply, close to doesn't apply. So on your normal tours, you don't have any kind of, do you have any kind of music at all? And then on the tours, like there's no. This music, there's just commentary. When we get to the statue, there's music. There's all we want to do is to take pictures. But it's not like you have, like. No, it's, it's like, like a, you don't have like a DJ. That's, that's, that's what I mean. On your, on your normal tour, you don't have like, you entertaining you like music going. Yeah. The surround sound throughout the main deck. There's four speakers on either side, and then we have uh, four speakers on the top deck in the corners. And uh, it's a it's Bluetooth into an amplifier yeah. that goes into uh, yeah, either like Apple Music or so. So for so on your normal tours, it's just background ambient music with a. But we also should include. Um, you would have a. Tour uh, commentary by you know amplified you know an amplified narrator comment I don't know whatever your language. I do have a party or something and somebody wants to bring on like uh, a DJ or something like that. Well, that's we'll talk about that. Charger, I mean, that's that's, that's on yeah, charter. yeah. We'll talk about that under the charter section because we'll have to put a few other things on for the charters. Um, but this is just your your daily tour, so um, so that's you not know, apply for a change. You're not going to have unlimited drinks for the tours or anything. It's not. Not on time. Yeah. Um, you'll have that. You're you're going to have a wait. You're going to have a line to board. So it's not like you can't really say you can't have a line because there's going to be a line of people lining up to get on. We right? do have tents that are specified just for our pier that people line up on the beach. We do have barricades for the line, just mm -hmm. specifically for our guys. Yeah. Because the bikes have to get through. So should we? So they be organized and they may know So can we say a staff person designated to ensure the line to board is, is organized? We have that. We have that right. The signage. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all from our standard stipulations that apply. So we will have the person designated to ensure we lines are ordered. Okay. Is that, I mean, they have it already, but yeah. Okay, so that's this one. And then. Okay, and I'm going to share my screen with you. Yeah. So all that happens. Okay, so the additional stipulations would be what you said is already a lot like the, the music has to stop 500 feet before. Okay, so I mean, we can put that in. It sounds like that's already regulation. Really, it's always, I've never seen it, right? It's always been like a unwritten thing. Where it's, like, it's in, well, let's put it in right. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm saying for operators, we always you just know. We're just like, all right, guys, we're getting close to the dark. Kind of like turn it down. Okay, so additional stipulations is a question. Stop 500 feet from the pier. Um, for the standard tours, I'm thinking, is there anything else that we think need to be on like their standard tours before we get to the charter events? I don't know. Are you going to, where would you put in if you do um, engage with residents? And activities, where would you put that? I think that would be general. No. No, that would be just. So you're going to have the um, tours of charter in general? I mean, I think tours in general probably can be one. So then you want to put it. So here. we want to put it here. So we should say something about. Excuse me, one second. Before we go on, just the music. Um, like when we were on tours, and I have people boarding, sometimes I like to put on like, you know, like Frank Sinatra, Billy Joel, something like that as they're boarding, like some like back. Is that a, can, can I do that? Like, it's not like a, 
like a base form and thing, but that's like kind of gives the ambiance. Is it so? Room. It could so be. I mean, room. we could put this. To it, what it would need to be is it shouldn't be heard off the boat. This has to be very cool. Once you stay in that, it's so like, like, oh, I lowered it. You know. Well, no, but I mean, we could put this. Should be music or not? But we could put the same stipulation like we put for for bars that can't be heard outside the boat. I mean, the pier. If right? they have it on, if they have low music on, as people but, are getting on. So you know what I get up with the outdoor stuff all the time. Well, I lowered it; it's very low. You know. But but the but if if the standard is can't be heard outside the boat, if you're standing in, on the dock and you can hear it, then they're in violation. I mean, that's a clear definition. I mean, I'm, I'm asking for it's, a gonna, it's not going to be clear because someone's going to say, oh, I can't hear it, it's lower. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be subjective and you don't need it. You don't need to hear brain mm -hmm. standards to get down the road. Mm -hmm. And if there's, an unwritten, if there's a rule that you're not supposed to do it, then you shouldn't be here yeah. violating the rules. I mean, you just said that you're not allowed to do it, right? Yeah, she said you're, you're, music, so you're not allowed to do it, right? Fine. All the music is amplified. You don't have any acoustic music there. So the rules are already that you're not allowed to do it, and you're already trying to script the rules. That's what I'm hearing. Withdrawn. What? Request withdrawn. Okay. I mean, if, if you, if that's what you. Okay, then I guess uh, you just need to send an email to the office. And then you know you know you have the right to come back next month or whatever. Wait, are you with Donuts? You were throwing up a request. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours. I know. Yeah. I know. When you said the drive, it's the drive. No, no. Third. I thought I was like, I was like, we've been going through this now. We're going to do it. Okay, did you hear? He said Susan made a good point. Am I getting an amended notice from Ed for the DNY tomorrow? Um. Or a letter, an email. Um. That's more an SLA thing. I don't. I, I don't really care. We don't care if we go okay. down. Yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. That I mean, you said withdrawing. I thought you meant you were withdrawing tonight. Okay. 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 So, so, so music is stopping five hundred people. Here. And then, um, so as far as the 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 music is stopping five hundred people. Here. Here. And then, um, so as far as the working with neighborhood, you know, neighbors. Maybe you know. You know. No, it's not outreach. Engaging with the neighbors with cleanup and other community benefit activities. Is that is that a, something like that? It's engaging with the community for cleanups, activities, involved community involvement. Yeah, community benefit. And you said you're doing that with Henry Street also. No, what are we talking about? Let's go to other about Henry Street some of it. Well, you know, they're, they're wonderful, but there's lots of little organizations also. Engaged community members. Uh, With Tiny World, too, is one of the. I mean, uh, Henry already has more. I love that they're my favorite yeah. in the world, but they are. Okay, so other, other stipulations, general for now, then we'll move to the charters. <clears throat> I just looked at the other. I don't see, I don't see anything else. Yeah, I don't. And, and I just looked at the other. I was looking at the stipulations that the other one sent us, and there's nothing else in there. Other than there's nothing else. To okay, so then, so then stipulations for chartered tours. Um, I mean, would it something that would be, you know, the bar would close 45 minutes before the dock. Is it 45 or 35? 30, 30, 30. 45 is what we were told. 45 is what we were told from other places. Uh, is that? It's our stipulations. <laughs> I, I mean, I, they, you know. Right. And I was actually on a wedding on one of the boats from the west side, and they stopped an hour before. Okay. They did. It was a, I think it was a three. Oh. It's probably it was over three hours, but they start they closed the bar an hour before. And people we are still drinking after they closed it. The yeah. So, um, okay. So we'll say no serving alcohol within forty five minutes of dock. Now that should actually be. Do we want it returning to dock? Forty five minutes of returning to dock. 
So, and then we already have, I mean, the general was music must stop at least 500 feet from the pier. Um, so what are the things for the, for the charter trips? They're gonna be longer. I don't, That's it, I can't think of anything. I don't think there's anything else. Anything, do you have anything else that for a charter tour, if it's gonna be a three or four hour, is there anything else that we make? Did you say DJs? And oh, what? DJs or do we wanna? Do we say music? Well, I guess they're, they're, they're they're not, Exactly, I guess they're, they're following the other music. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah if it's, yeah. so I don't think we, we don't need, they can do DJs or record music or whatever they want for that at that point. If it's 45 minutes, it won't be in CD3. <laughs> um, I think that's it. That's I can't. It's not much you can do. Okay. Um. So it's a little, you know, not our normal procedure. But is everyone okay with the stipulation we read from the first sheet, which again will be I'll compile these into one document somehow, and then have these general stipulations, stipulations for charter tours. Is that? Okay, so I guess we'll move to a vote. Okay. Um, Steven? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Clint? Yes. Michael? Yes. Okay, so that passes. Um, I will type these up in some format and get those out to you. And I think it's editing tomorrow. Can Someone send me the stipulation form in a word. I think I have it from some. Uh, you know what? Yeah, just send an email. Okay, and I can. I'll just redo it in the stipulation form with these new things because most of our old ones don't apply. Thank okay. you so much. Thank, Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you listening. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And I mean, we are. We understand what you're trying to do. And, and again, the other thing I will mention is. And there's no timeline on this, whatever, but if things are going well, you can come back at any point in the future, but it needs to be a while to show that you're operating well. If you're not causing problems and things get better, you can come back for changes as well. Two hours. Well, you know, just, I'm not saying that will be granted. No, no, I understand. We understand. Keep have on yeah. Yeah. Try to see where we are and not. Exactly. That's, you know, um, and as far as the community, I don't know much where that, if there's anything that wants to come our way, that somebody uh, you could. Know, you should stay in touch with Trevor. He is a, a side, totally aside from the community board. You know, he is on the community board. He's a yeah. committee chair, but totally aside from that, he is a leader in that community. And, you know, he can direct you to small nonprofits there, mm -hmm. um, you know, that you can work with. And, um, you know, I would go to him. Right. But the other thing I'd recommend is uh, reaching out to Boomier Gardens. No, I, definitely I don't know if they're going to be receptive. You may want to get Sally. I don't know if you want to exchange information. I don't know if you want to talk to them anymore, but probably at the full number. They're probably also probably. So, I mean, you guys had mentioned that at one point you had some endeavors with educational programs. If there's something we can do just for the community, I mean, this would be something you know we have. Well, yeah, here's it's the original promise of Doc NYC. Yeah, talk to Doc. Yeah. Tell him to get out the papers that they yeah. used when they first came to us ten years ago. So, here's what I'd also recommend. So, as a committee, we're basically advisory to the full board. It still has to be voted on at the full board. So, our vote of approval could be overturned at the full board. Yeah. I would, want to, I would recommend that you probably attend the full board meeting, which is going to be Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 24th. Yeah. I would recommend you probably attend because I have a feeling there's probably going to be some people there to speak in the public session in opposition to this. They have changed stipulations that we've agreed on before. They've gone into specific applications and you know not saying it it may not be a first case it may not be a problem like i have no idea how the full board is going to handle it but i would just suggest you might want to attend just to be on the same yeah to be on the opposite yeah okay here's here's the uh, information for the full board thank you
It's at PS20. Right. Appreciate you guys working with us. Uh, really much well. Yeah. Good night. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. Thank you, Sally. Okay, so. Somebody, yes. Somebody Nothing else. Does anyone have a motion to adjourn? Somebody has a motion to adjourn. Okay. Guys, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Wish you all the best. I appreciate your time. And again, and it's not necessarily, again, some of all this isn't, we know it's not your fault or it's something you're, but it's just, there's a lot of problems that we're trying to, trying to work through. Yeah, not, but, not yeah, blaming no, you for it, but we're new. We want to prove that to you. We know that you know you've heard the others. Yes, 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 and then nothing. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, just, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Susan, I'm stopping recording. You have to. You have to take talk off. Oh, what? Oh, what? Yes. You just did a vote to. Sir, sure. yeah, you, you did. You know what I voted. Did I get a roll call? No, you didn't. Uh, you didn't. Uh, yes. Daniel. Yes. Yes, Michael. Yes. Okay. No, I don't know. Turn. I do. Turn, really turn it off. Yeah.